Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Air Podcast After Hours Edition. We got a packed house. Roll Tomasi and Zuby in the fucking house. In the man. same building, man. Hey, all right, guys, let's get into it. All the night is my world. City light, paint it good. In the day, I'm in my heart. It's a night, I'm a pattern. Oh, yeah. I live a moment, read you about the light. I haven't got the will to try and find out. I mean, hey, listen, if you want to get off, if you want to leave, you, you could, you're more than welcome. To I leave. asked you to stop with the question and you didn't. Do you get want out, me that's to leave? Serious. Get the f- out. Put your shoes on outside. You don't got to put them on in here. I know the night is not how this would seem. I must believe in something, so I'll make myself believe. Hey, I'm Hey, we guys, are back. Fresh Podcast After Hours Edition. Welcome, welcome. We apologize for the delay, guys. Uh, I had to run the sound again, and you guys, as you guys know, I'm not as good as Trey. So, uh, but he helped me uh, with it before he left. Um, he's a little under the weather, but he'll be back uh, probably next week or tomorrow. So, anyway, guys, uh, quick announcements: patreoncom slash fit where you guys can see all the exclusive behind the scenes content, and me kicking out annoying girls. Uh, <laughs> you guys get the full behind the scenes, the Trey cam, as we would say, or like in this case, the Casey cam, uh, kicking out annoying girls. Also, you guys get to see, um, you know. Zoom calls, weekly Zoom calls where we talk about real estate investing, making money, cryptocurrency, getting in shape, credit scores, social media, dating, Mm -hmm. everything like that. Basically helping you guys become better version of yourselves because we don't teach you guys how to get girls. We teach you guys how to become better so you're not too worried about getting the girls. They're a byproduct of your success. Uh, Also, guys, we're on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. Every single platform you listen to podcasts, we are there to some degree. Just make sure you wear headphones, headphones, guys. We've had a couple guys actually DM us and tell us they got fired. You might get fired, man. Because what we talk about is not safe for work and it's not politically correct, all right? So uh, a lot of people are stupid, and quite frankly, you don't want to be getting in trouble for that. Also, guys, get the merch, freshfitpodcaststore.com, okay? That's where you can get all the merchandise, uh, T-shirts like this, the Punisher shirts, hoodies. Uh, I feel like t-shirts, all the merch is there, guys. Go go over there and support us. Also, if you guys wear the merch and tag us on Instagram, Fresh Fit Podcast on Instagram, we're going to repost you wearing the gear. So thank you so much for supporting. Also, uh, Fresh, you got a vlog channel. Hey, guys. So behind the scenes, you get to see my life, Myron's life, Chris and Trey, uh, our travels, our dates, everything in between. So go follow that channel. Almost 50K. Awesome. And then, um, guys, if you guys want to see this in even better quality, check us out on twitch.tv slash Fresh Fit Podcast. Close your Pornhub tab, open up another tab, and type in twitch.tv slash Fresh Fit Podcast. You guys get to see titties in 1080p and ba- way better quality. And, uh, yeah, check us out there as well. Open up another tab if you want to watch us on YouTube. Help us get the views up. And then, uh, also, guys, any reaction ideas, uh, DM our audio engineer slash YouTube strategy guy, Trey, at Trey Talk Sports. Any topic that we decide to react to, which we have one video to react to tonight, uh, we will uh, talk about it, basically, and we'll link you in the um, in the description box. So any donation that makes it, we'll, be, we'll shout you out. Uh, Chris? Yeah, like I said, go come up to our show and just DM on Aaron T. Thompson on IG. Make sure that you send me um, your profile is not private. And uh, send me some photos of anything if it is private. Um, and if you're flying in from some other state, bring your husband or boyfriend. So yeah, seriously, dude. <laughs> Uh, let's get it. Bring, yeah, bring your significant other with you guys. We don't want to deal with no BS. Oh, you fuck my girlfriend, my wife. Like, nah, bro. Like, just bring them with you. You can sit in the studio and check out the shows. No problem. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, uh, follow us on Instagram, Fresh Fit Podcast on Instagram. And then also, guys, I got hacked for the third time. So my Instagram is unplugged fit with three T's at the end. Check me out over there. Uh, because I keep getting hacked. But help me get up to 10K. I'm almost there. I've had it for about two weeks. So thank you guys so much for helping me get back up. Um, and then so we're gonna introduce the ladies, guys. Then we're gonna introduce our two esteemed guests last. Uh, Rolla Tomasi and Zuby, if you guys have been living under a rock. Uh, but let's go uh, here. Um, go ahead, Fresh. All right, so just give us your name, your age, what you do for a living, and your current dating status. So my name is Kiara. I'm 24 years old. What else? I forgot. <laughs> your, uh, what you do for work and then your dating status. Oh, okay. So um, I'm uh, managing three tattoo shops at the at the moment. We do piercings as well. And but I also am a professional singer. Oh, nice. Cool. Oh, yeah. And my relationship status, I'm in a relationship. Awesome. Welcome hey, back. Guys. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, guys. What's up? It's Slow Gems, aka SJ. Um, my status, I'm single. By day, I do taxes. And at night, I spit. I'm a rapper. There you go. <laughs> and your current status? Single. All right. 
Um, well, my name is Vegas. I'm a designer. I do swimwear and dance gear, customize everything. So, you know, if you want that, let me know. I also do body paint. And as well as that, I mean, I used to be a stripper. I'm not going to talk about that. Hell yeah. That's how my <laughs> life. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, it got me to where I want to be. So, you know, just keep going, ladies. If you're a stripper, one day you could be a business owner. <laughs> It's possible. Trust me, you can make six figures a year without having to take off your clothes. All right. And then your, your current uh, status? Um, it's complicated. I'm yeah. dating. That's I'm dating. I'm not having. I'm not having sex, but I'm dating. If you want to get me, stop the cap. Something. <laughs> You're not I, having sex. I, 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 no. Already, man. Already. My right. best friend lives with <laughs> me. She knows, and I, I live with two males, and they know. I'm like the Wait, good you live girl. with two males, and you're not having sex. Yeah. Yes, I'm, you can't fuck your roommates. <laughs> that's no good. No, that's no good. We don't do that. That's bad business. <laughs> yeah, we just turned Chris's mic up, guys. Okay, Cap um, City. Okay, all right. No, that's not Cap City. So you're practicing celibacy right now. I mean, until I mean, I want a boyfriend, or like I wouldn't even call it boyfriends. I don't like labels, but fuck, I want consistent sex. But I can't even get fucking wet unless it's like I have a connection with the guy. I know a lot of you girls understand that. Mm-hmm. Like it's like. If you don't have a some certain kind of connection, it's like, like it gets it's annoying. Like I, like I have guys like take me on and and treat me but, good. But, but the like, question is, are are you are you practicing celibacy right now? Yes, yes, I am. Cool. Yes, I am. I'm t- until a guy. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> no, you can't. Like you can't. You can buy these hats online. Right. Uh, Stop, Stop hats. Stop com. Full cap. Stop putting the hats on. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, because I'm running out of hats here. Stick a finger in this. Stick a finger. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, I'm speaking. My name's Tori. (laughs) I'm in the danger zone. I'm 26. You missed it. It's okay. Danger zone. What does that mean? Danger zone. Do you like girls? (laughs) Thank you. Do you like girls too? No, I don't. Why? Well, I mean, I like them. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Hi, Dad. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, and <laughs> Who likes I, girls? I run a podcast. And then what else was I? I'm single. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I need some island. I bet she likes Hi, girls. Hi, I'm Gabrielle. <laughs> um, I'm an esthetician. And I do modeling. And I'm single. All right. And how, how old are you? Um, I'm 27. Cool. cool. All right. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Mila, aka Miami Brett, on all my social medias. And I'm a rapper. I'm 21, about to be 22 on August 17th. And I am also a personal in home organizer. So I organize homes, closets, all that. And your current dating status? Oh, I'm single. And you're a rapper, Yay. rapper. Yeah, real like, rapper. I'm talking about like Foxy. Do you like girls? Oh. No, I don't. You can like spit some bars? Okay. <laughs> Why? Can we right now? like a show where it's like bisexual girls. Later, later, later. Oh, for real? <laughs> later. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. okay. All right. cool. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm Sunny. I'm 26 years old. I'm single and I'm a cosmetologist and a dancer. Fire. Cool. All right. Welcome back to the show. And last but not least, we got yes. in the building Roll Tomasi. And Zuby. <laughs> Can you guys uh, introduce yourselves to our audience who may or may not know who you guys are? Most of them should, I hope. So, guys, but those so are guys this is Zuby and this is Rolo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Zuby. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm Zuby, independent rapper from the UK, but from a lot of places, really. Um, author of the book, Strong Advice, Zuby's Guide to Fitness for Everybody, and host of the Real Talk with Zuby podcast. Nice. Mm, I'm Rolo Tomasi. Hi. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm the author of the Rational Mail series of books. Uh, you also have, you know, who I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the YouTube at the the Rational Mail. Uh, He's YouTube. been here many times. Oh, we got a Clips channel now too. So go check out the Clips channel. What's it? What's it called? The Clips channel. Ra- uh, Rational Mail Clips. Boom. There you go. All right. Okay, guys. So uh, we already got four thousand nine hundred. You guys in here? Almost five thousand. So guys, we're gonna probably Chris. Uh, Twenty and up. Yeah, we're going to go 20 and up, but I'm going to read all the Super Chats right now. So for you guys that got it in right now, very intelligent. It's not? Okay, well, they don't want to hear you anyway. Okay, wait, 25 hours. Looking forward to the show tomorrow with Rolo. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to fix your mic. Don't worry. Yep. Uh, we got um, Daddy. Daddy, 25 hours. Thank you to Rolo for introducing me to the Red RP. I was one of those lives he saved. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. You the Rational Mail is out here saving lives. Dragon King 229. 
Y'all are awesome. Y'all have helped me so much when it comes to success in females. I'm moving to my apartment tomorrow and my business is starting up. So thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Awesome, 100. brother. Thank you. Good job. Uh, and then we got Mr. Fourth Quarter, 15 hours. Rollo Fresh and Fit has changed men's lives out here. When I tell women about the nine iron rules, they think I'm crazy until I break it down. They don't want us to have this information. Yes, absolutely. I don't, okay, I, I don't, know, I don't know why you're sharing that, but okay. Yeah. Uh, shout out to, to Rolo. Uh, keep up the good work, guys. My status has gone up. Now married women hit up my DMs. Absolutely. And then you're going to say, uh, nope. So anyway, <laughs> MX3, Rolo and Zuby, that Don DeMarco button uh, about to go haywire. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got uh, Tabris uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Great to see Rolo and Zuby on the show. Thanks for everything you guys put out. Also, Blondie can get it. Okay, you got a fan already. Uh, what's 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 your Instagram? At Torsha, T O R S H A A. There you All go. Right. On and, everything. And I, um, oh, wait, anything else? Oh, I was talking over you, but no, no, no. You you didn't finish your thought. Go ahead. Oh, I have red hair. Okay. <laughs> That's it, all. It looks I it looks blonde it. on camera. That's, That's why. It. Okay. Um, but <laughs> so uh, sorry. oh, and also, guys, for you guys that don't know, real quick announcement: we just had a fantastic interview with Zuby earlier, yeah, so yeah. make sure to put that in your saved uh videos for watch later and check it out. It was a very base conversation. We talked about you know transgender stuff we talked about female sports it was really good conversation equality so equality it's very woke conversation. Uh, the the uh the pandemic you know we talked about all that scandemic so, name <laughs> name withheld uh hey fresh of fit i want an answer from the ladies how come all these girls want a loyal and good man but suddenly get amnesia when it comes to their body count and how they did guys dirty uh my friend you must be new here you, uh, need, to go back and watch, uh, you need to go back and watch the other stuff we talk we ex explicitly explain why women lie about their body counts like we've had many episodes talking about that <laughs> Uh, Frank Castle incoming. I've made my prediction. Shout out to the chat. Y'all know top level guests. Thank you oh, so much. Oh man, Nick. Nick Page. Uh, Chill Bank. Ten hours. Get Rice come on the show. Actually, he didn't he, hit us up on Twitter. He said he wants to come on the show, but uh, he didn't respond to the DMs. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, Trade D twenty four ninety nine. Uh, Super sticker. Thank you so much. Yeah, he was watching one of our streams on Twitch. Uh, yeah. Bumble Clot. Uh, I have a feeling Frank Castle may have to make another appearance tonight. The caps is over nine thousand. City boys up. Thank you. Uh, Trap Politics TV. Let's not kick anyone out yet, please. I'm. Well, hey, man, that's not what I try to do. Uh, DJ Quack Quack. Myron, I think we can both agree that <laughs> girls will always choose financial guys over ethnicity. Yes. Why would they care when they know summer, the guy ranked number one in income, will always take you on vacation? Okay. Um, uh, anything else? We're caught up? Cool. So, guys, from this point forward, we're going to read 20 and up Super Chats. But when you do Super Chat, it's going to be shown at the bottom. Don't worry. you. Every Super Chat will be shown on screen. We're only going to read 20 and up, though, and then as we continue to climb, I know it's a Thursday. We're probably easily going to hit 10K, so uh, we're probably going to have to increase it, guys, just so that we can keep the show flowing and not interrupt. But uh, go ahead, Fresh. Cool. Nice. Okay, so ladies, two scenarios here, right? You got two options. A guy that will take you on vacation, treat you really good, but he might cheat, or another guy that's going to be a little bit less uh, fun, kind of like, you know, boring stuff for the most part. But he won't cheat. Who would you choose? But you, and I mean, can I answer? Oh, okay, so yeah, we're gonna go he, uh, this way and then come around. So, the boring guy that's not really, really that much fun, but he won't cheat versus the guy who'll take him on vacations, be a lot of fun, but he might cheat from time to time. Who would you choose and why? I would choose the guy that wouldn't cheat hmm. because if he's boring, I'm not boring, so I can make him have fun <laughs> and he's gonna come along with me. And we're going to do fun stuff regardless. So, you know, I feel like as long as I can be fun, I could just, you know. I mean, sometimes it's hard to, like, carry the relationship and the excitement in it. But I'd rather do that than have somebody cheating on me. So, so you think you could change people? I think I could influence them and introduce them to a different lifestyle or different things, you know, that they might not have known before. Can somebody change you? You can only change change a person that wants to be changed. That's the point, but all right. <laughs> all <laughs> if right. I want to. All right. Um, I'll take the boring guy who went not cheat. Why? Because um I'm I'm not really um interested in um having too much fun and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun in my life and if we could be born together, that's kind of more fun than a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I would rather take the guy that can invest in my business and, like, <laughs> instead of him paying for that date, invest in my business, buy wholesale some outfits for me so I can make some bread. We could have a picnic, do some shit that don't cost money. Mm. So if you're going to spend some money, spend it on something that could be lucrative for both of us in the future. You feel me? Because I'm all about, like, 
spoiling your man or whatever, but like he gotta show me that he deserved that. Cause us women, we know how to make money way easier and faster than men. And that's not always on some whole shit. No, none of that shit. We don't always gotta do that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But that's just yeah, you know, so, invest so, in me, invest in me. Don't buy me no Birkins, invest in me. I'm that girl. Invest in me, please. <laughs> I'll give you a solid business plan. Invest in me. And I'm going to give you, you know, ownership, a, a certain amount of ownership and rights and trademarks. And and you feel me? Like, let's make this shit make sense. Literally. So, so I'm curious. Why invest in you when he can invest in himself? Well, I mean, if you have, I mean, any investor bank, if you have a solid business plan, mm. Because it's like, I'm not going to come on no half ass. I'm not saying invest in me in the way of buy my hair, buy my nails. Mm-hmm. I mean, invest in my business equipment, my business, et cetera, et cetera. If you got a solid business plan, mm-hmm. then that's that's something to invest in. Okay. If I could, if I could make you um, write off taxes and, and get you a bigger tax return, why the fuck not? Okay. I, I respect it. I think. Well, never mind. I won't add to that. <laughs> um. That's a hard question because technically women cheat because of spont. I can never say that word spont- spontaneity. Spontaneity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's no self. I know that I would say I would want the one that doesn't cheat, but my behavior, I believe, would say otherwise. So probably the second one. I don't know because we're both. That's the complex. You gotta, like complexity. You gotta, you gotta choose one. That's the complexity of women, though, is like we want somebody that's stable, but yet if they're too stable, they're too boring. I hate the test. That's why girl, women why? cheat. Yeah. But Perfect, if, perfect girl, is boring. Yeah. Help me out here. But if you, if you had an angle to choose, which one would, would it be? Um, if you cheat on me and I have absolutely no in, inkling that you did it, like you don't act different, don't tell me. Like I'd rather the one that's fun. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Keeping it real, oh. but like stable. So. <laughs> yeah. See, so for me, like, I can't be with a boring man, you know, because mm. I will cheat on him if he's boring. <laughs> right. Period. So I choose a cheater, but what I would do instead, I'd be like, baby, let's let's go online, let's get on some threesomes. Mm. Like, I'll make my man happy so he doesn't have to cheat. Okay. So I'd rather have the fun over anything any day. Like, so you you, you make it easy that. for him to do. Oh yeah. But just involve you. Exactly, but if he did cheat, you know, shit happens. Like, I respect you. I might cheat, too. Like, who knows? We could work on it. We'll work on it. I'm not going to be with a boring man, because I will definitely cheat if right. I'm with some boring-ass man. Keeping it real. So, All right, cool. Yeah. I respect it. Literally what she said. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I would not want to be with a boring man, like, at all. Like, let's be real, like... Who wants to be bored, you feel me? But I would probably get with the cheater, because he's spontaneous, and, like, it's kind of exciting. You know what I mean? Like get cheated on (laughs) (laughs) the drama the drama the drama yes because yeah keeping it spicy okay cool um uh, honestly i i don't want to be with anyone that's boring i'm not gonna lie about that um i I just wouldn't make it official with the guy that's cheating because technically you're not cheating if you're not mine so Mm. it is what it is it is what it is we're Um, dating we're dating yeah okay i got you i wouldn't be with a boring guy anyway I would marry one for sure. Oh, I wouldn't. Oh, I would. I wouldn't get married to a boring guy. No, not at all. Oh, thank you. All right. You're gonna make so me we, laugh and shit. We got a wide variety of, of um answers here. So, so we got some Yeah, I'll read some chats real quick. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys should be able to hear Chris now. Let me know. Uh, okay, we got Dondrell Lee, twenty dollars. Just received a copy of the Rational Mail. Also, I ran into Mister Organic today. This podcast has leveled up my perspective for life expeditiously. Thank you to the whole crew. Zuby, travel and be great. Big up, Rolo. Salute. Thank you so much. A shout out to them. our boy, Organic. Mr. Organic. Three of them. Mm-hmm. Go three subscribe them. to his YouTube channel, Mr. Organic. Good friend of ours. And tall guy car reviews. Uh, the Pacifist, $20. Dudes should not accept women saying they just want to be friends. <laughs> Shit. If you accept that, you're saying that you don't mind being a homegirl with a penis. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, caught up? Okay. And then, Lax Wing, $20. I see great value. Takashi69 is here tonight next to Zuby. <laughs> <laughs> they swear. Uh, why, why y'all always bets, hate on the girls with tattoos? Bets, though, like. bets on who's getting Frank Castle. I'm putting twenty on six nine. Show you me gotta, your bank statements and talk to me. You got a rebuttal? Literally, you like, literally, literally. Show me your bank statements. No homo, no stripping. Then talk to me. Put some <laughs> on my name. Bitch. Shots fired. 
Uh, Sadiq Musa just wanted to support the show. Thank you so much, Canadian twenty seven ninety nine. Sham Tactics twenty dollars donating again because my brain cells are dropping faster than a cheetah used I to make. I love that y'all talking about me though. Keep talking about me though. Keep it coming. All right, Stephen Cabral twenty dollars. I love the show. Love conversations. We all know looks matter. However, we also know there's some su subjectivity to that. I'm interested in two specific attributes women prioritizes and what they consider good looking face apps, etc. Um, okay, Steve, uh, well, that, we'll probably get into that because yeah. we will be talking about physical attraction. Good breath and smelling good. Okay. Right. Uh, so Notorious.02, like. uh, $20, Canadian, $29.9 Canadian. Been here but, since 10K subs. You guys yeah. have helped me on becoming a better man. Got played big time, saw many red flags, and ignored them all. But no more. Hashtag beast mode. <laughs> here you go, brother. Thank you. And then Joshua Kimber, $20. Tell Blanca from Street Fighter to answer the damn question. <laughs> She's out there. Yeah, what the fuck? Anybody got a rebuttal for that? Yeah. We got some hollow points for you. <laughs> oh shit! We got hollow points oh, for you. Blocker, blocker. I guess they're shooing back. Oh, All right. Uh, CK, twenty dollars Canadian. Which high value man will invest in the Mortal Kombat character next to Zuby? Great it might Zuby just be Zuby. Quit playing with me. That is a great game. <laughs> There you go. There you go. You might, you might fuck around and fuck up your own bag talking let's, let's shit about nice. a bitch. Let's be nice. <laughs> we gonna be nice tonight because okay. y'all probably broke. DJ Quack Quack. <laughs> Look up the wiki. Like, I pray for y'all to get a bag. I really pray for y'all. Right. I love that I'm the center of attention. Though I love it. All right, DJ Quack Quack. Look up the wiki list of ethnic groups in the U.S. by household income, and with that in mind, all yes from girls. Um, know your place. You ain't even in my echelon. Nice show, bruh. Love from number one. Yo, I want two girls because I got dope. From DJ Quack Quack. Trey D, damn, guess I got to drop another 20. I didn't include a message, but new to the show and appreciate all you guys do. Married life for me, but fun to watch. Thanks. Okay, man, Prom be man. safe, bro. Be safe. Get, get, try to get a prenuptial agreement. Yeah, or get prenup, bro. Get two separate bank accounts. <laughs> uh, uh, you uh, know. Don't commingle funds. Uh, Kadarius Player. Actually, we did a whole lot podcast on that, guys. Check it out with our lawyers, uh, Jen, uh, Jen Pratt, Jen and, Pratt and, and her husband. We talked about if you are going to get married, how to protect yourself. You hear this? Kadarius Player, $20. Can I put yes. an ad on your forehead, Miss Tattoo? On my cash app is the official Vegas. I Go love ahead. You. Okay. Send my deposit. Yes. Send my deposit. Money talks, bullshit walks. So either you talking shit or you paying my pockets. All right. Ooh, all right. Carl John, uh, $25. <laughs> Red hair, 6 9 a whole ass GTA character. Got a and I'll fuck you up in some GTA. My and I'll say, you're a character. Uh, no, for real. That's right. I'm glad y'all love me, though. I'm glad y'all love me, though. Anything? I feel like I'm on a comedy sketch. All right. Anything, uh, Chris. <laughs> okay. So, Somebody good? say so, something okay. about me. Next question, right? All right. Uh, uh, from here, guys, we already got 7,696. You guys, yo, guys, I need you guys to keep like talking the video. shit about me. I love like it. Like the video, and I'll do at this point, I will do 40 now. All right. So, uh, funny. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But all super chats are going to be shown, guys. Okay. Yeah. And also, do us a favor. Uh, Chris, are you good on the sound now? Yeah, guys, give us ones in the chat if you guys can hear Chris. They can't hear you. Oh, yeah. Well, dun, dun, all right. Wow. All right. <laughs> Next question. Go ahead. So, ladies, what do you look for in a guy? And we'll do like an order of, uh, I want to say three, three top things you could say, looks, money, or status. Just say in the order what is important to you <clears throat> and why. Okay. Um, I guess. And hold on, honey. Let me, I want one more uh, thing in there too. Okay. How tall, how much money a year? Okay. Um, so looks, money, and status. Looks, you just got to be, you know cool looking you know what does that um, mean cool like looking. you know Swag? i'm okay with someone who looks a little different i'm okay if you look if you dress different or act different i'm okay with that um when it comes to status um you got to be social like you got to be okay with socializing if we go out or whatever because i like to socialize so i like to socialize so if they like to socialize that's <laughs> always a plus um as far as money goes um i'm not gonna act delusional you know, so uh, I'll definitely keep it at like 50K and up, you know, <laughs> that's livable. I make good money. If you make, you know, livable money, we can always grow from there. Um, height wise, like I said last week, all last week, I love the shorties. I love the five, six and up as long as I and I and up. That's it. And um, what was the last question? How much a year? How much a year? She said 50K. And up. OK, cool. 50K mm -hmm. and up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. What was but, the question? What status is your most important uh, attribute, I guess? Um, as long as you can socialize, it's not a matter of, of you having to know anybody or anything like that. It's a matter of just being, when we go out, just don't be someone I have to babysit and like introduce to everyone. Like be someone who's 
you know, forward. Yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. You yeah. don't mind stepping yeah. forward and talking. Right. Especially when you're a social butterfly, yourself. you hate that. Yeah, I'm a social okay. butterfly. Talk for yourself. I, I shouldn't have to, like, babysit you and make sure that you're not, like... All right, like, I'll translate that. She wants you to have game, guys. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. one yeah. for... Have a little swagger and mojo about okay. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Cool. Yeah. Looks, money, status. How much a year? How tall? Uh, looks, money, status. I mean... Which comes first for you? Second, third? Looks, I definitely have a type. Um. What's your, what's your type? Okay, so I like brown skin. You know, like her color. Yeah. So, that's like my type in so a guy. So you like nigga, you like niggas. Yeah. Okay. I can fuck with that. I'm Afro Cuban, like you know what I mean? Ooh. It don't look like it, but <laughs> BBC winning guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We coming all colors in Cuban. But um well okay, so I said looks. looks. Okay. Money and then the status. I don't really care about status, like where you're at. You can have four hundred followers on Instagram. I'm not judging you. I really like low key men. I really do. Um, and like she said, 50K, you know. No, I really do. I really do like low-key men. Like. Stop the cap. I need to wait. I need to they put a zero on that. They could have status in their industry, okay. though. And then uh, how tall and how much a year? I like status. Yeah. Um, I would probably say like 5'8", you know. Okay. Yeah. How much a year, though? I already said, like she said, 50K. 50K. And up. That's really low. <gasps> that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? In Miami, though? I would die. I mean, I... that's more than I make a year. So I could never settle for that ever in my life. I'm just curious, what's 50K look like? Right. Like, it's that looks average, like one bag. Average household. Bag. Yeah. So, so, average household. so, so, no, Miami. I was shooting. You're cool with your Miami. Well, I just moved back to Miami. So okay. I'm, I just came from ATL, so it's just like that's yeah. like saying you you okay, okay. with a nigga making two thousand dollars a month? Honestly, yeah, you're actually okay with that. I mean, yo, 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 I'm, okay. Okay. I'm okay with being treated right. No, I'm okay on. with being loved the right okay, way. Do the math. Right. Wait, two, on, four, two to four. No, four, 50 k a year is roughly. That's high for, I'm not trying to be poor. It's okay, so four thousand okay. a month. It's almost four thousand. But realistically, that should be your own. Wait, hold on. Hold on. You, you can yelling. get groceries with that. You can pay your rent with that, and you good with that. So you just gotta right. grow. You just gotta want to grow. Minimum. That's it. Yeah. That's the bare minimum. We don't settle for the remember, bare minimum. Remember, we're not on you yet on what you no, want. No, no. Let, let me shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll shut the fuck up. I'll shut the fuck up. Okay. For me, what is the first question now? So, uh, yeah. Looks, money, status. What comes in order for you? And then how much a year in hotel? Yeah. So for me, I'm more like love to get to know somebody intellectually. Um, I've dated multiple races. So mm -hmm. the race doesn't really play, play a part as long as we are on the same frequency. Um, the is, that status, the, is that the money frequency? No, the frequency is just intellectual. Like okay. on a different level, you know, we can do everything together and be mm -hmm. cool. Never fighting. Nothing like that's the kind of status I'm on. Mm -hmm. Um, for money wise, you know, I have my own business and stuff, so I make a good amount of money as long as my man is treating me right. I don't care if he makes 50k, Shut or out, 40k. <laughs> nah, Stop nobody. I'm saying, like, I don't care what they're making, you know, because I know I'm gonna provide either way. Gonna... If they treat me right, if they treat me right, then I'd be with them. You gonna you take know? care of your man? I mean, I could, and I'll be fine with it. For how long? I mean, I could do it for a while because I have a good, you know, I'm cool. Stop the cap. But that's no cap. That's no cap. If yeah. a man's treating me right, I've been in multiple situations where a man disrespects me because he has more money. If a man's treating me right mm -hmm. and doing everything that I like, you know, Tell him best money friend. doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm on a different level. Like, it matters money matter. Stop the cap. Okay, yeah, that's it's a cap to people. People think that shit, but it's not a cap to me. Okay. And then for height, um, usually somebody taller than me. I'm five three, so like at least five six to five eight, starting at. And I love like taller men too, like mm. go up to six foot eight. You know. I got gotcha. you. So it's just intellectualities first. If we're like vibing out, we have the same energy. That's the number one. Number two is if they're treating me right. Okay. I don't care if they're not making enough now because what happens in five years? They could be making much more. Don't go off potential. I'm going to I'm gonna have to so challenge you a little bit on that because Yikes. the thing is this. I understand that you're saying, hey, you know, cognitive stimulation is very important to you. Yeah. However, let's be honest. If a guy that's very intelligent and cognitively stimulating <laughs> comes up and talks to you, but he's not attractive, you're not going to give him the time of day. If he's not attractive, then no, I'm not going to give him the time so of day. Therefore, so, the, I have to so, have so therefore, so therefore, OK, first. but here's the thing. He has to meet a requirement first before that cognition even comes into it, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, of course. So what is the most important thing is what he's trying to say. So the most important thing, I think, is intellectual. Like, so, you but know, I, I literally just said, 
if if he, if he doesn't meet a certain requirement first, you're not even going to give a fuck about what he has to yeah. say. No, so you're right. He's got to meet he some kind of confidence. prerequisite. No, I confidence? love a nigga with confidence, like a man with confidence, okay. because a okay. lot of men talk to me and stuff. But if they say the right words and they know how to talk to me properly, then I will go for that. So regardless of how unattractive they are, I mean, confidence yes. can be the attractiveness yes. for women. And I've women. dated men it can. for five years, got engagement rings. With I know there's I a bare minimum. See. There's a, there is a bare Myron. minimum, though. Let me be the mediator. That's what she means. Trust <laughs> yeah, me. no, no, no. But here's the thing. No, I know Actually, it doesn't seem like that. I will not trust you because you're a <laughs> woman and you're going to tell people things that are politi <laughs> politically correct. I mean, if you want to take you're not going to because no, 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 because no, that's the truth. Like w women are not in a position to give men advice on how to get women ever because you guys are always going to give the politically correct. The, that's not true. The nice way to phrase things that aren't going to ever, ever, no. ever, ever. Yo, no, yo, first and foremost, I'm talking. All right. Stop cutting me off. The reality is this. Women will say, hey, I like personality. I need cognitive stimulation. It's all fucking cap. The man has to meet a certain requirement first before you even care what comes out of his mouth. And I said he has confident. to meet a prerequisite of some degree. Typically, it's looks to some kind of attraction for Confidence some kind of bare minimum. Alpha male. But, but here's the thing. if he could, he could be as confident as he wants. But if he doesn't meet the looks requirement first, you ain't even going to listen to what he got to say. You're going to look. No, oh, fuck. I don't care what he got to say. doesn't matter how much game he has. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that yeah. there needs to be certain standards met. And no offense to you, but no, your initial fee, not you, the uh, you, Me? yeah. Because, oh, I'm not upset at all. No, You're but fine. but like you know, and and I don't blame you because your knee jerk reaction is to give the politically correct advice. But I the need... truth is, women are never going to tell the unflattering realities of what actually makes men attractive to them because the things that make a man attractive are not polite to say. Yep. Don't text Money. her back. Be toxic. Don't give her that much attention. Don't put her on a pedestal. She's not better than you. You, she needs to follow your programming. All these things actually make you arousing, but women are never exactly. going to admit that shit. No, I'll, admit, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the first female like, rapper like, to admit like, that okay. females are attracted. Like to Wait, that. hold on. When I said confidence, that guy could be ugly or he could be really hot. Mm -hmm. It just fucking depends. Exactly. Excuse my language. No, listen, wait, hold on. Go ahead. So... I work in the clubs, right? So I know like ugly motherfuckers that yep. pop in bottles. They have money. Ugly as shit. Midgets. Disgusting. <laughs> they just because they go up to you and they own it. The girl will fucking go with them. And they're ugly. You missed a you missed a huge point. I did. <laughs> yeah. Wait, popping bottles. Yeah. They're popping Pop, bottles, bottles and they in have club. That is a huge so that's what I'm saying. That's, that's you, what he's saying. You proved I agree. my point right there. No, that's, okay, and that's okay maybe I misheard you then. I agree with you. Okay, what he's saying is basically. because he's he saying. said you Yo. have to go based off of what you see first. I correct. Mm -hmm. They the money first. Women like money. Women like men who don't like them. Women like money. Yeah, I was gonna say no. Look, one time I was. In your book, senior year, this ugly ass guy that I knew how to crush on me forever finally said something to me. Nobody in school, all the football players, all the jocks, all the dicks you wanted to suck didn't say nothing to me. That guy did. And he was so ugly and I was so unattracted. He was he came up to me, but he was nervous and he was shaking during your book. And that's the only time he ever spoke to me and he turned away awkwardly as fuck. He had most way more confidence than a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it was not attractive because he was ugly to me. He was not fine. Right? The, the point I'm trying to make is this. Poor guy. Hold on, guys. All I'm trying to we say broke his heart, is that there's a barrier to entry, and women always like to not acknowledge that barrier to entry that looks do matter and or money. Something has to come first before you even entertain talking it's to him and listening to him. Correct. You said it earlier. I do. They're throwing money at the club. Popping bottles. Popping bottles. But, that's when I, but you Thank said you it differently. for proving my point yes. that there needs to be a prerequisite my, met first before I, you even entertain talking to the man. But Myron, you were you kept saying attractive can is what I'm it. saying. Money like, can make a man You have to see. Attraction is attractive. Okay. Like one at a time. Way. One at a time. Okay. Whatever. So, I'm just being like. Okay. You know what? No, you're, you're just incorrect yeah. is what it is. Like, okay. So, you, Fine. It, I, I said clearly. Him. I clearly said it. Prerequisite needs to be met before the confidence can be shown. Yeah. You but literally use an example of money. Money is a prerequisite that was shown prior to the individual talking to the woman. So she entertained talking to the man because he displayed what? Financial adequacy. Or let's say he doesn't have money, but he's good looking. Okay. He's now, I can see that he's confident, but I'm giving him the option to even talk to me and allow him to convey the confidence to me. I'm saying confidence is attractive, but it does not come first. Something typically has to come first 
for the woman to even entertain the man for her to even get a chance to see that he's confident. It could be clever. That's what I'm saying. I'm literally, literally saying that it, like when she That is said, not what you said yes, at all. Can it can is I not what something? you said. You that didn't is, even listen. I listened extremely closely. I've been taking notes. I <laughs> like, I said when she says confidence, that's a physical attribute. Like for guys, it like physical attributes, it's like hair, skin. I'm saying literally the way that, that he will make my confidence is not tangible. No, yeah. I'm I'm aware of that, but I'm just saying when you're saying these things, women know what confidence like looks like. It's a physical attribute. Mm-hmm. We can spot can it like that. Really that bad. was my only fucking point. There's women yeah. who I won't even go to a confident that you man because they want I was just no like, confidence can turn the. To, can turn really tacky really bad. Uh, cocky, yeah, yeah, really tacky. Tacky. It's really tacky. Real quick. Cocky, cocky is really tacky. And that's where it's ugly. Yeah. Listen, but at the same you time, that nice too. guys Obligation is also ugly. It is what it is. It's true. Nice guys finish last. Okay, period. so that's order list, looks, money, status, how tall, mm. and then how much a year? Uh, looks, money, status, in that order. Mm-hmm. Uh, 70K after taxes. And <laughs> height-wise... Thank you for mentioning taxes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Height-wise, I've always dated guys that were between the 5'7", 5'11", range. Okay. They were probably shorter. I feel like people put down 5'11", when they really mean, like, 5'9". Everyone's 5'10". Cool. Right. I'm just, I'm short, so I don't notice. All right. Hold on, real quick, real quick. She had, you had something Say. before. We didn't get a chance to, we didn't mean to ignore uh, you. Oh, yeah, no. I, d- I, I definitely said, I, all I said was that... Uh, Confidence can turn really tacky really quick. Okay, yeah. okay. And then I that thought you wanted to add something. Nice guys finish last usually okay. at the end of the day. Rolo. Yes. All right. I want your yes. uh, explanation. <laughs> so um, we did the first question earlier, right? Mm-hmm. And we asked the girl basically, would you choose a guy that's more fun, exciting, versus a guy that's boring? Mm-hmm. And majority said the fun guy because obviously they, they don't want to be bored and, you know, they'll take a little cheating and once they don't mm-hmm. find out. Well, can, you t- can you tell us why is that? All right. First of all, perfect is boring. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's an inherent need in women to have some sort of exhilaration, some kind of a, a source of indignation mm-hmm. is what it comes from. And it is important to women on an evolutionary perspective because what women have to do in our ancestral past was to decide whether a guy is presenting honest cues or not honest cues. And the it's what women would call like feminine intuition. I call it like the hypergamous filter. Like, is this guy really who he says he is? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, Miami. there's a lot of exhilaration. There's a lot of indignation. There's a lot of like chemical high that comes from trying to decide whether or not this guy's for real or he's not for real. And so that's really when we talk about excite, oh, I want to be with the guy who's exciting, right? Well, the guy who's exciting is going to be you know, for lack of a better term, high That's value, high himself. value guy, <laughs> on, an alpha male, a high value guy, finish, an alpha male, whatever you want, you know, however you want to term it, whatever the, um, the the abstract is today, okay. But that guy is going to be the guy that women have to say, is he really who he is, or is he not really who he is? And it's it's this this back and forth that really kind of makes women feel alive. So when you look at like daytime TV, when you look at uh, books like Fifty Shades of Grey, when you look at romance novels, when you look at anything that is sort of like titillating for women, like like the like my movies, media, um, music, that kind of stuff, it's usually something that says like, uh, is is he going to cheat? Right? Is he is he a cheater? Is he not a cheater? Is he is he who he says he is? Is he really? Does he really make this money or is he just like a sandwich artist at Subway, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that that's the uh, trying to figure that out. There's nothing that is more self-satisfying for women than to believe that she's figured out a guy using her feminine intuition. Mm. That's the difference between a guy who's boring and a guy who is like perfect and dutiful and, 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 and you know, essentially boring, not as, ex- not as exa- exhilarating and the guy who's unpredictable. There's a mm. there is a definite excitement in the guy who's unpredictable because she still has to try to figure that guy out. Right. The guy who's who's sense. dependable, the guy who's always there, the guy who's faithful, who's loyal, who's always going to be there. There's a security in that guy, but he doesn't provide the same kind of chemical high, the chemical rush that mm. women get when they're going with the guy who when they get with the guy who is the the fun guy. And so you'll notice that a lot of you know when when women say, oh, I want the 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 guy who's exhilarating and and fun, it's usually women who are in their in their younger years, right? When a woman gets to be about 29, 30, 31 years old, that's when, you know, I'm going to look, I'm going to cash in my chips here a little bit and look for the guy who's more dependable because now we're getting out of the sexual marketplace and we're getting into the security, like long-term security years. So what you want right now at say 19, 20, 
well, 18 to 28, let's just say in that 10 year span there, mm -hmm. that's going to be a lot different than the guy that you're looking for when you get to be 29, 30, 31 years old, because then you're looking for dependability and long-term security. Wow. Don DeMarco? Yep, absolutely, man. Okay. Don DeMarco. Ladies, that is why. Okay, Zuby. <laughs> What's up? Question for you, bro. Go for it. So in the current data market, right, from what you've seen so far, like, is it true for most, uh, well, your opinion, right? For most women, they look over most guys because they want certain, you know, you know traits or <coughs> well, what's your what's your opinion on that fact? Like from what they said so far regarding guys that they choose, the height, the, the requirements. What am I thought, man? That's can you can you be slightly more specific? I feel like that's such a general. So, it's, so it's too general for me. So let me ask you this then Go for, it. for you. Right. How has it been dating for you? Is it like, OK, uh, because of your fame now is a little bit easier dating girls or is it like a lot harder from before? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, so for pretty much most of the last five years, I was actually in a long term relationship. So I'm actually like relatively recently single and I've things have come up a lot since the last time I was single. So mm -hmm. I've certainly sort of come up and been like, oh, things are different now. Girls are sliding into my DMs and <laughs> like <laughs> from all over the world. And stuff stuff is is certainly different. So the blue check helps. Yeah, I've, I've had the blue check. <laughs> I've had the blue check for almost 10 years, man. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I've had the blue check. For On almost Instagram? 10, uh, Instagram, maybe like three Twitter. years. Oh, okay. I think Twitter and Facebook, yeah. like 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I meant on Instagram. Oh, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so so you definitely see the the status at play there because okay. obviously you know I'm the same guy doing the same thing just on a bigger level, and obviously I think guess the money is somewhat implied with that. So mm -hmm. yeah, you see that, and I think it's this is one of the weird things because when you're on that trajectory, you have a lot of concerns that perhaps the average guy does not. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, OK, if a girl is showing me signs of interest, is it just because she's heard such and such about me or thinks like, OK, cool, this guy is, you know, making good money and is going to you know, make make a lot more or whatever? Or is it because, OK, they just fundamentally like who I am and what I do? And I think that's a sort of danger for men who are have some level of fame or status or money or whatever. High value. Yeah. There's always that question once you reach that level of okay what is it that what is it that's attracting these women to me and is that the right thing awesome mm. there you go cool uh some uh we'll we'll do um we'll finish this round and then i will read the super chats All right. you, you sure you want yeah oh, yeah it's fine no. go ahead just cool. let's go finish this round okay so once again looks money status in order and then how much a year and then how tall First of all, stop hating on me just because I have face tattoos. Because y'all can never, never, ever, ever, ever be in my position and win like me with all with five face tattoos. Anyways, I would go with status first and foremost because I want to know where your head's at and what you're doing with your life. And that, you know what I mean? Your status shows a lot. That shows whether people got respect for you or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I would say money just to know that you can take care of not take care of me, take care of your own house and home at least. Your family, that's your obligation. And then, you know what I mean, looks is last. I like ugly niggas. I like them fine ass <laughs> ugly niggas. Like ugly I like being the pretty one, like being Period. a pretty little bad bitch and you just show me up. I, I love that. Y'all can talk, y'all can, right. can hate me all day for my tattoos, <laughs> but I elevated to a, a point to where I'm so comfortable with myself mm -hmm. that y'all can't tell me shit. And I, I love it. I love it though. It's like I'm I'm being the getting the most attention because I got my tattoos and my red hair and all this woo -woo. So good. Keep it coming. Woo -woo. Right. Keep it coming. Keep the woo -woo coming. All right. Awesome. So so would it be fair to say that um money plays a, a much larger part in your I get my own money. Stop it. It's it, it's about what what do you want to do now in five, ten, twenty years from now? Okay. Are you are you Can gonna you be the same thing? Can again? you let me finish the, the question? Uh, what I was all I was asking was because you said looks don't really matter. I'll date a guy that's ugly. That's fine. But how does he compensate for that? Is it through finances? Is it through? It's through being yourself. I'm 25 years old. Being I'm to yourself. a point where yes, I actually want a real like I'm to the point where damn, do I need to go and Christian mingle? Right. Black people meet because I didn't stop stripping. I didn't stop like I used to escort back in the day. All that shit. I lived every life y'all could think of. Drug dealing, all that. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't do none of that no more for a reason. I'm a business owner now. And I, I've I consistently been on know. my shit. 
I consistently been on my shit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you I, already know. You already on, know. We're not gonna play that card because we can pull cards right now. She said Christian. What? <laughs> huh? Pull cards? What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> what do you? What do you? Uh, what? Ba this nigga is the biggest. The biggest um member of seekingarrangement.com. Absolutely. Ever. Yes. And we all know that. Exactly. The yes. Same shit. Yes. Exactly. I, I have but talked about it multiple times. Exactly. That you should use that today. Exactly. You should use yeah, it. You use that as a, as a tool to learn to get in the minds of motherfuckers that are more successful than you. Ain't what? no one. No, huh? Yes. What? You use that as a tool. For me personally, as a woman, okay. I don't sit there. I don't go to a guy and be like, oh, like, oh, money, money, money. How did you get to be so successful? Give me tips. It's not about girls will sit there and have tricks and sugar daddies and they'll just fuck for their money. No, bitch, figure out how the man got rich. Like, try to get tools and life lessons, real shit. Okay, so you don't gotta uh, sell. You don't gotta sell your ass to, to, all right, to get all right. smart. So hold on, first and foremost, <laughs> there is no pulling cards because I've openly spoke about using that website today. Well, I'm multiple not. Times. I'm not a fan. Like, I'm so not, there's no. Hold I'm on, not, let me finish. I'm not, I'm let me not finish. an avid, avid user. Of this let me show, let me so. finish. Let me finish. So nice attempt, but I've told guys many times. No, it's I've no openly... attempt. It's no attempt. No, no, no. I'm just saying I yo, don't yo, watch yo, this show all the yo, time. You need to, you need to stop. I don't watch this show. You need all the to time. stop. And let me finish because you're being extremely disrespectful right now. How? Because you said, let me pull your card. Number one, I have openly stated multiple times on multiple YouTube channels, you should use it to date. Just don't trick on it. Okay? Me too. Me too. That's number one. I've told guys that all the time. Yeah. Number two, if you want to pull cards, you're the one that needed a fucking lift payment to get you over here. Okay? Yeah, of course. So if you're going to be rude about that and of try course. to pull some cards, let's do it for real. You're the I one that was begging nothing. in money paid. All right, that's cool. But you know what? At this point, now you're going to get up and you're going to leave the premises. That's Because no you're extremely problem. disrespectful, you're being loud and obnoxious, and you're hurting the uh, quality of the show. That's fine. If you can't take my opinion, that's on Your you. opinion is extremely disrespectful, and it's hurting the quality of the show. So that's I'm going to respect you, ask you to get up and leave. Smoke. Okay. He's mad best. He got exposed for a right. Not at all. So, uh, openly said it multiple times. Yeah, so are you so irritated about it? No, because you're... That, you're that, I said that, and that's for the first All right, so uh, <laughs> great show, guys. Is uh, it over? Oh, all right. No. Oh, no. Oh, we're just getting started. You think the show's going to stop because of, like, I love people my having a... Oh, now ask for a room. Hold on. Let me... She's like, I love my emoji. Like, it never happened. <laughs> www.slwjmz.net Go check on the boys Dragon Town I might want to play Hangman This is okay This is so awkward I don't know what to do Okay No, he has to stay I think um... Gabby We'll be back we're going downstairs because I'm not going to go downstairs. I'm going to go use the restroom. Right, go there's a bathroom downstairs. It's up to True what he wants to do. He's a grown All right, guys. So, yeah, uh, we're like in intermission right now because uh, we're hey, in yo, the standstill. Yo, listen, listen, listen. We got a short run. If you got to go too, it's fine. Oh, I don't have to go. Okay. Well, she's yeah, not she's welcome fine. here anymore, she's so she's got to leave. Can you please turn it's, it's up to true if he wants to leave or stay. Yeah, you should play truth or dare. Get the show going. <laughs> like super chat version though. Ten dollars, take your bra off. That's <laughs> very true. That's a Hi, Dad. A I'm not doing that. Hey, I'm not. I just rededicated well, on Sunday. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoever puts two hundred and fifty dollars in the super chat. I don't know what sure, I would do. <laughs> All this uh, drama is making me thirsty. Me too. Uh, like, I saw this coming, man, from Malibu. Oh, I knew people, it was going to happen. I did too. I knew it was going to happen. It. That's my best friend. I already knew. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. You on your own, bestie? <laughs> it's okay. I already knew. <laughs> I have the fourth. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> okay. Follow, so follow me on Instagram at Miami we just Brett. just had the first Frank Castle. <laughs> and it's like, yo, like. Good thing world it record. I'm no, just trying I'm to promote my music. Yo, yo. Miami Brett. Yo. Miami B-R-A-T. I tried, man. She's trying to expose. I what? try to do what we you said do. On the show. Yeah, we said it before. We told guys about you to do that, to use it. So I'm like, whatever. But. It was the GTA comments. Choose one. Yo, Chris, <laughs> if we're going to. <laughs> Bro, she literally said, told Chris, oh, I got nobody. Please cash out me some money so I could get out there. Out there. And I'm like, bro, like, fine, we got you. But like, if you're going to come in and try to like talk smack, then let's, let's play this game, you know?
Uh, oh, I see the FBI commented in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> FBI is in Someone here. with the emblem, FBI emblem came in. I knew it. Uh, okay, so uh, let's hit these super chats real quick. Yeah. Um, Chris, you there? Uh, he's no, in the he's, bathroom. Yeah, he's in the bathroom. All right, okay. so uh, continue so, on. So uh, I guess we're going to skip her then because she's not here anymore. <laughs> but uh, Skull Gems. Well done, Chris. Could, well could, done. You, could you give us um, <laughs> looks, money, status? And then uh, from there, height and then how much a year? All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say money, looks, then status, mm -hmm. height, mm, five eight, and up, money, mm, seventy five k, and up. Okay. And then for you? So for me, it'll be status, looks, and then money. Why? Why? Because what will make me initially attracted to somebody, without knowing them, is their status is how social they are is mm. you know what what they do you know if if it's something that i feel like i'm compatible with you know something that interests me off the bat you know just knowing about their status is going to make me want to be like hey you know i want to get to know you and then if they're attractive then of course i'm going to want to get to know them and that's going to really make me want to get to know them and then and then money is a plus a plus yeah okay all right, cool. So uh, we'll hit the super chats real quick. And then how, yeah. how, how much a year, and then how tall? Oh, okay. So how? Okay, how much a year? Probably about the same, seventy-five. I mean, I would say a hundred, but <laughs> no, nah, say hundred. Nah, do what you gotta do. Bro, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta, we gotta make, we gotta have them write it on a piece of paper <laughs> and then reveal it because they're gonna know, go off right? what everybody else said. We don't shame people for what they want. Um, what I really want is yeah, I want, I want a hundred k. That's fine. Um, and height, um. I'm five five, so I want somebody to be at least a couple inches taller than me. I would say like five eleven. Five nine. I can handle that. <laughs> if I wear heels, Period. it's okay if they're a little <laughs> bit shorter than me. Um I rarely ever end up with a guy that's like six one and usually they're toxic. So <laughs> toxic. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Uh okay, so uh we'll hit some of these super chats real quick because they were flying in, guys. Uh appreciate all the donations. Uh, I'm going to read 25 and, uh, no, sorry. It's 40 and up, right? Yeah. 40 and up. Um, so, okay. We got, uh, KS, uh, okay. Senior, senior muffin, muffin top. top. <laughs> this girl with red hair looks like McQueen's fingers after eating those hot Cheetos. Oh, oh yeah. shit. Is that me? <laughs> yesterday. Oh, yeah. Man. From yesterday's show. Uh, KSG03, hundred bucks. Uh, thank you so much for that. He's a, a YouTuber. Hey, thank you to you. And then Demigod Jones, Castle is on the prowl tonight. Guys, I was yep. trying to be patient, man, but she yeah. just kept like cutting people off and being annoying. And I was like, damn. I tried my best. I feel like uh, you're killing it right now. I try with you. Uh, DL <laughs> says, uh, what's good, fam? Uh, respect to Rolo and Zuby. Thanks for introducing me to Zuby. I'm digging his content. The castle is coming tonight. My money is on red with the tattoos. Love to Maya and Sonny. Oh, yeah, he you called, called it. Called yeah, it. There's yeah. your money. Don called a bunch, it. A bunch of people called it, man. Uh, Don called it. I didn't want to see because I knew that's what they were going to say. And I was like, no, no, no. Let's let's see what we can do here. But I don't know. I sense a Frank Castle coming from GTA Chick. LOL. Three days in a row. Fresh fan Rolo. Y'all are the best. Thank you for what y'all do. Guys, Thank by you. the way, the video will be on um, Patreon after this. Yes. So we'll don't worry. There. We recorded it. Uh, Khalees Ash, $50. Love the podcast. Y'all are true leaders in this day and age. Congratulations on success. Two million for y'all is on the way. 100. Quick question for Rolo. Do you think that young ladies who have a great relationship with their fathers make great wives? Mm. Um, no. Mm. It depends. Because uh, well, guys, they asked, they asked Rolo. They, they asked, they asked <laughs> Rolo. They didn't ask Rolo, the girls. Could you make it short? It depends on what that relationship consists of, really. It, it's, I, I, like what, it's very ambiguous when people say, like, well, what if she has a really great relationship with her father? Well, I don't know what that looks like. Does right. that look like the guy's like a, a beta chump simp who does everything, <laughs> like buys her a pony whenever she wants a damn pony? Is that is that a good relationship? Or is it okay. like he... He prompts her in the right direction, or is is the example of the alpha guy that he would want to have as his son-in-law mm -hmm. later on? Is that is that the example he set for 18, 20, 30 some odd years so that that's what she's like organically, naturally following? Mm. Or is it like just give her everything she wants? Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends on what your definition of that is. But generally, yes. But it just depends on what the what the parameters are. Please, the please very, specify very, if you want to. Yeah, yeah, very, very yeah. ambiguous. Yeah. Well, people always want to because everybody wants. Yeah, everybody wants to say, well, you know, oh, it's daddy issues. They'll, they'll blame everything on daddy issues. It's like, no, I mean, what's the example that 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 has been set like in in a two parent household where there's a mother and a father still there together? The mother is sets the example for femininity and the father sets the example for masculinity. And if that guy sets a very weak beta chump example and mom runs the house, well, is that 
he was there. He's still a good father, right? Yeah. Right. He's still a chump, though. So it kind of, de- I don't know, it just depends on the guy. Okay. It depends Damn. on the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> Joshua Kimber, uh, f- fantastic answer. I told, I told you, you Blanca ain't answering the questions. I did not want to say it's time for Frank Castle, but I've seen that about a spark off from a mile away. Blanca, roll oh her behind out of here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, I tried, bro. I've been like working on my patience a lot, but you know, you have to give her the. Get her out of here. Uh, and then uh, $100 from Thomas Lehrer. Uh, note to the women, a valuable man already has his assets in check and is not worried about what you bring. He's already focused on his assets to support him first. And then you, he might toss you tips, but don't expect them. Okay. Thank you. Cool. And then uh, let's see here. PG3000. I've been watching for 15 minutes. And as soon as I turned to then, I knew the tattoo face girl was going to get Frank Castle. Mr. No Shit Myron Gain still undefeated. Come correct, ladies. This is not a game. The man takes knots for Christ's sake. And then Freshest Feet, $40. Oh, Yo, God. Shout out to Fresh, to Fresh and Frank, uh, Sonya Blade on Tuesday. Fresh and Frank. Bebop and Rock City <laughs> yesterday. Uh, 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 now Blanca from Street Fighter. Thank you for allowing me to relieve, uh, relive my childhood all in one week. We got you, bro. Awesome. Oh, okay. Whose feet uh, are those, nigga? And then DL Saint, I knew oh, I knew it all. LOL. I'm scheduled to be in the day tomorrow, but that storm may keep me away. Yeah, yeah, got, storm yeah, is definitely right now. Storm. Yeah. Thank you for this taking weekend. care of that, Myron. Love you guys and Rolo. Have to check out Zuby. Don't like the quality of the show with people being disrespectful like that. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And uh, and I'll address that here in a second for you guys. Good. $40. Love from the, the Florida Keys Fresh and Fit Podcast. We're doing God's work. Shout out to the uh, to the Rolo, your books changed my life. Absolutely, guys, go pick up a copy of the Rational Mail. Try to stay sto- uh, dry during the storm. Oh, that's what yeah. you said. Okay, we're caught up. So, guys, I'll, here's the thing, man. I didn't want to kick her out, but she just kept over talking people. I noticed every time when someone was making a comment, hell, you were just trying to say what you wanted, and she kept like interjecting. And um, for those of you guys out there, we've talked about it many times, me and Fresh. I don't know yeah. what she's trying to say. I'm going to pull y'all a card. We tell you guys, Yo, use Tinder, use, use Bumble, every use Essay, single use thing every use. single website to, to, to meet girls, bro. And talk to girls out at the mall. Talk to girls at the club. You got to use all different avenues, guys. Because remember, dealing with women is sales. You are only as strong as your leads. leads. You can't close deals unless you get leads. So leads come from various sources, Tinder, online dating, Instagram, etc. Right? Cold approach. Instagram. Then you take those leads, move them into dates, from dates, then you move into sex. That's how it works, guys. That's the game for men. You got to use volume as your best friend okay so i don't know what she was trying to say with that but the, my biggest thing was she kept over talking me and i was gonna actually wrestle explain actually you guys should be on that website if you have money like what the hell are you doing the yeah. key is you don't spend money and pay you, girls to you don't, hang out with trick, you. Trick you don't trick you don't trick guys that's that's the thing here's the other thing too for some of you guys that might not know this a lot of those websites have like lawyers doctors very successful women that just want to date someone on their level yeah you know what i'm saying so that's another thing uh, that's another reason why some girls go on obviously you, you deal with some Chicks like that sometimes I'm crazy chicks, but you can also meet some pretty successful women on there. Yep. But uh, guys, the lesson here: work volume. That's how you get girls. Okay, cool. Going back. Sorry. So uh, just real quick, Rolo Zuby, mm. do you have a question for the panel at all? Yes, Anything guys. You ask Turn it to you guys. Oh, you go. This, you go. You got your shot. Right? Yeah, you, go. You, you haven't gone yet. You gotta go. And then next turn, next turn, you guys can ask questions to, to the guys on the panel. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's ask a serious question. What are your thoughts on marriage and if you plan to do it, when you plan to do it? Mm. All right, we'll start here. Okay. Um, so and anyone who watched last week knows that I'm a single mom or a co-parent, as some people like to correct me. Um, I think marriage is cool as long as everything in the relationship is working out, but I don't think it should be forced. Um If you're dating with intention and the intention is to get married, then I think that's amazing. Um, However, I don't think marriage should be the end all be all for everyone because I don't think it's in everyone's path of life. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So for you, it's it's, it's possible. Um, It's possible if I find the right person, um, but it's not something that I'm actively looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm a mom of two toddlers. So right now, all I'm focused on is being their mother and being active in their lives. Um, So dating for me, it's like no one's even going to come around my kids in general because they're not my priority at Mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, marriage is it's a possibility, but you have to understand that you're never going to be the first thing in my life ever. Do you think that would be different if you didn't have kids? If I didn't have kids, I think I would be more focused on career at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 26 years old. Um, I I think that 
you know, it's important for us to establish ourselves. I think life experience has taught me that it's important for you to establish yourself and, and focus on yourself before you uh, focus on, uh, in my opinion, a relationship is worrying about the mm-hmm. opinions and the emotions of someone else. Mm-hmm. And I think you're at this time and the way that the world looks, I don't think um, worrying about someone else's emotions is important until a lot later on in life, to be honest. So it really depends on your outlook. Um, You know, my goal is not to ever just go off and look for someone to get married to. Um, I I was put here to enjoy life and I'm going to enjoy my life the way that I think I should. So until it happens, you know, nature will tell me if it's time. Gotcha. Cool. I definitely believe in marriage. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I want to live my life until it's that time. I'll know when it's that time. I want to fully like grow into the woman I'm supposed to be. And I'm going to wait till God brings that person that's meant for me. You know what I mean? Um, until then, I'm just going to be doing what I do. I'm going to be taking pictures. You know, I want to start a business. You know, I'm going to keep rapping. I'm going to be in the studio a lot. Like, what I do on the regular, like, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then when it's time for me to get married to someone, then that's going to be my time, you know, until my type comes around. So um, you'll change when he comes around? No, I'm not going to change when he comes around. I mean, I'm pretty, like... Most women don't marry their type, though. Mm. Mm. It's interesting. Sure. Hmm. Why do you think that is? Because I think I think most women in the beginning they're chasing the the ambitious guy or the guy who's not so nice, somebody that they think that they can fix. Mm-hmm. And I think later on they realize they can't fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed, so they end up settling for a nice guy. Hmm. That, that's how I see it. I think women will settle for mm-hmm. a nice guy and end up getting married to a nice guy, but in the beginning they're chasing a man that they think that they can fix. Mm. Okay. But you can't fix someone. How do you define a nice guy? Um. Uh, because sometimes that, that's used as a as a compliment and sometimes almost as a So I, I understand that I've mm-hmm. told someone that they're a nice guy and they took it like it was the most insulting mm-hmm. thing in the world. <laughs> so I totally understand boy. that. You're a good boy. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I totally understand why saying that someone is a nice guy because saying that you're nice means that you're a little bit more submissive and men do not want to be submissive whatsoever. So telling a man that he's nice, you know, it, it's better to call them a gentleman than to say that they're a nice guy. If, okay. if you're going to call someone nice. But I think I think it is uh, somewhat of an insult because it makes a man feel like he's less manly than he actually I, is. I would argue it's not that you're he feels submissive or it's uh, he's not manly. <sighs> it's it's more of what you're basically telling the guy is, hey, listen, you are not arousing and I see no sexual future <laughs> with you. You will never see me naked. So yeah. I, horrible. <laughs> that's <laughs> really that's what I, I wouldn't I say it's submissive or whatever. It's more that. You're over. You're openly rejecting any type of sexual advance from him, and you've basically told him you don't qualify as a potential sexual partner. You only qualify as a friend to share my platonic uh, time with. As a woman gets older, they get tired of trying to fix somebody, and I think at this point in our lives, women need to stop trying to fix a man and just, you know, actually enjoy the people that are in their presence. Most women are trying to fix someone, and and that's just the, the honest truth. You get with a man, you're trying to fix him, or you're trying to. Mm-hmm. There's something about him that you're trying to to grow out of and and fix yeah, him. You're into. trying to mommy him. Yeah, you're Literally trying. Literally, to... why I'm single. Like, I don't want to <laughs> fix anybody. I don't want to babysit anybody. I don't want none of that. Like, I just really want to be single. Like. Mm-hmm. I'm actually like really good where I'm at. Like, I don't, it's nothing to it. I like being single and I like not having to worry about if I'm getting cheated on. I feel like when the right person comes, the right person is going to come. Like, that's really how I see that's it. That's funny. They're going to come. <laughs> Both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What All about right. You? So ask the question one more time so I can. Marriage. <laughs> he, he has a question. All right. What are your thoughts on marriage? Do you want to get married eventually? Well, for me, like my parents, they divorced and my daddy is so happy with his new wife and my mama is happy being content. So I don't believe it's for everybody. I believe every, you know, generation, it makes you feel a certain way towards marriage. This new generation, I think, is a little bit different where we've seen all our parents be getting divorced and, you know, what goes on? We still want them to be happy. So what I care about is happiness. Um, I personally don't care if I get married or not. The same if I have children or not. I'm almost 28 years old. You know, if I don't have children, I don't have children. So I feel the same with marriage. Like if if I don't get married to the man I want to be with, then I'm not going to get married. But I will be with somebody for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. 
I don't need to have a you know label on it, you know. The contract. I don't have to have the contract because it actually might work better without it. Ah, so that's true. Yeah. I can respect that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I do. In the next few years, want to get married, and I. Be- ah. Sorry. I believe in getting a prenuptial agreement mm-hmm. and having two separate bank accounts. And then there was another part that I was going to add to it, but I totally forgot. Oh, uh, I somebody said something about waiting for the right person to come a- around. Uh, in my opinion, from what I've learned and what I've read, relationships are behaviors and they're you have to keep. What's the word? Uh like conditioning yourself to get better at it and when you say these things like wait until the right person comes around you're pretty much setting yourself up to be past the age preferred. where you're going to be preferred by men uh what do you what do we call that the sexual market please you mean the wall like i'm in the danger zone right like i'm 26 mm-hmm. like so 23 and 25 28. 28 so that's to the prime for women yeah, but like guys that are 45, they go for that age range. Like men, it doesn't matter, right? Mm. So if I decide I'm just going to wait and work on my career, I'm going to get old. Yeah, <laughs> men are allowed to you get know? ugly. Yeah, that's where it kind of, it sucks when it comes to uh, what it, what it, evolutionary biology. Because it's set up kind of better for men in that aspect, which is why you guys should always yeah, be right. I don't think it, and, up. There's no rush for men. That's but, right. yeah, but for women, there is. But there's also no such thing as a biological right. clock. So freeze your eggs. I respectfully disagree. No, I'm serious. Like there's it's research not this complicated. On it. It's just like when they there's come. There's social come. pressure. If that's what you're talking about, like everybody having babies. The selection's at, gonna be different. Women can't get ugly. Men can get ugly. No, I'm talking. Are we talking about the cat uh, I, I, so, biological clock? Or yeah, like so in general? you said you said the biological time clock does not exist. It and, I said, exist. and I said I respectfully disagree that it actually does exist for women. And it's far. You have less of a window than you think you do. But go ahead. You're making a claim. Why you saying, think it does? I, I was saying if you think of it as like a social thing where women are around the same age, 31, 32, they're seeing everybody getting married, having babies. Mm-hmm. I could see that as being the pressure. Okay. But internally, there's no such thing. So you're arguing that it is not biological time clock. It's more of a mental time clock and a social a pressure. So- a social. social. So- I wouldn't say mental but I guess it could turn mental. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because obviously yeah. when women get to a certain point point in their life where they're 29, 30, and they start to, yeah. as Rolo says, the yeah, epiphany yeah. phase, uh, I'll respectfully disagree with you because by the time a woman it reaches age 30, what, like 80, 90% of her eggs are gone. And yeah. then by the time she has she's 35, her ability to have children is significantly compromised. And every year after 30, her ability to bring children to term drops precipitously so sure. i respectfully disagree well, that there is a biological time, time clock 100 so on wait, women here's the here's the bio here's the bio here's the biological realities of this okay so there is a biological clock but it is like your fertility window when yeah. you are right around say 18 to about 26 years old if there is if there is a biological clock that's when it is that's when most women actually most women gave birth much earlier than yes. that in our ancestral past so mm-hmm. is there a time where a woman who is not on hormonal birth control, where she would be her most fertile and she is in her most physical top prime. That's why I kept saying, you know, the the peak sexual market value years for women is about 22, 23 years old today, right? It might've been earlier in the past. Yes, I get that. I'm, I'm making, you know, concessions for that right now. So if there is a biological clock, it happened way before 30. Yes. Way before 30. Because if you go and you look at the, the, uh, the, just the statistical evidence and the, the biological evidence as just like you were saying after every year after 30, it becomes that much more difficult for women to, to actually conceive conceive and carry a a, a child to, to term within like that. that In a healthy manner. Yes. Safely. So if there is a, and so what she's talking, and I I know, I know what you're going to, I know where you're going to go with this because, because a lot of, well, because a lot of, (laughs) because a lot of women will say, I'm not getting any older, 29, about 31 years old. That's when everybody wants to settle down, cash their chips in and say, 
say, you know, I got my biological clock is ticking. I got to find the right guy. I'll settle for the nice guy. That was actually mm-hmm. going to be my question. No. But, but so I'll settle for the nice guy. Yeah, you don't want to, but that's where most that's women not, do settle for reliable. those. For the, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. So yeah. Well, th- we're, there we're is an opportunity. There is. I'll, I'll hold, yeah, hold, yeah. hold that, hold that thought. It. Hold that thought. I got it. I'm holding okay, it. Okay. So, so, really hard. So <laughs> the so, so biological clock is usually like women are taught that their biological clock should click in right around 29, 30, 31 years old, because that's when everybody, you know, babies, everybody, all their friends are having babies and whatever else. But it's also happens to coincide with the time where women have to cash out of the sexual marketplace because the next crop of 22 year olds is coming into the sexual marketplace and their ability to consolidate on guys that they want to get with the ones that they're trying to lock down becomes less and less and less. So every year after 30, it becomes more and more difficult. So it's like, there is a social pressure that we call the biological clock right there. And that's what we sell. That's a, what's called a social convention that we sell to women saying, this is when you got to do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the party's almost over. The lights are almost going to come on at the club. You better find, grab the right guy and get out of the club quick before, you know, bef- before the party's over mm-hmm. that if there's a biological clock, that's, that's the social understanding of the biological. Clock. Go ahead. So, go so ahead. when I was saying, which I think you just answered it, but that's just, I held on to it really go hard. Ahead, so, Okay. The biological clock, what my understanding of it was before I said the social stuff was that there's this thing that goes on inside of you, like biologically, that you have to have kids. You even if you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So when I was saying to Myron that it was a social thing, I was just saying that the thing inside of you, like a biological inkling, maternal maternal instinct instinct doesn't exist. But there's a fertility window, obviously. Correct, (laughs) but that's separate. So, okay. I I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. She's conflating the biological time clock with the fertility time clock. What we're we're simply saying that the biological time clock applies to all avenues. You being able to bring a child to term in a healthy fashion with the lowest risk of some type type of issue is uh, it's increased the longer you wait. And and by the time you're 30, you've lost the majority of your eggs. And by the time you're 35, you bring a child to term in a healthy fashion is almost zero. It's very slim. So all we're saying is that there is a biological time clock. I get where you're going. You're like, well, there's not necessarily, I guess. I don't get the baby rabies. Okay, that you can say that. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, I think that's but, important for people to know because they think it exists. Well, here's the thing. Um, I get what you're saying. It, 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 like that's a feeling. Yeah. This this baby rabies thing is a feeling. Yeah. However, let's talk about the fact. The fact is, by the time you're 30 and onward, your ability to bring children to term is significantly reduced. That is the biological fact. Freezing eggs does not necessarily help you. You're paying ten, twenty thousand dollars to expensive. throw a dark, uh, to throw a dart in the dark, essentially, and you might or might not hit target. So, exactly. um, and the other thing too, is I will say this: we have so many social conventions out there to make women feel better for their bad decisions when it comes to family. We tell women chase your career, make money, get the bag, etc. We tell them everything except, hey, you might want to cash your chips early when you're at the most beautiful and you can get the best value guy you can and have a child while you're still in your youth. We tell women, no, no, no. Push it back. It's okay. Because when you lie, what happens? Women buy. Women are the consumer base. Women are far more impressionable. You guys control 80% of the market. You guys make the most purchases. So there is a uh, an economic incentive to tell women to hold off on family and children because we know this is a fact that when people are single, they spend far more money than when they're in their family. Sorry, go ahead. I was also going to say, uh, I feel like men also want you to have the kids I feel like <laughs> merch. Yeah, I was. I, I, you know, I think the men really want you to have the kids early too, because as you get older, it's harder for you to go back to looking the way that you looked before mm-hmm. having the kids. Um, I, I had two kids in one year. Shamelessly, I will admit that. And honestly, my biggest. What's fear, wrong with that? My biggest fear was was actually my biggest fear was blowing up like a balloon. Okay. You I had good. yeah, so I actually took care of myself while I was pregnant, but I also had both kids at 22 years old, so I was able to make sure that I retained and went back to that weight that I was before. Otherwise, mm. I would be considered lazy, right? Mm. Because I'm young, I can go back to where I was. 
not everyone has that privilege, but my body and my metabolism. I didn't think about that. That's another good point that mm -hmm. you're able to recover from pregnancy right. at a faster rate mm -hmm. when you're younger. When you're older, your body holds on to weight a lot longer. And obviously we know that men are not fond, not all men, some men, you know, you know, BBW community, but <laughs> some, other men, some, and some men do not like the way that a woman looks. And that's how I feel like a lot of relationships go downhill after the baby. And you have, if you have a baby late, men start to become slightly unattracted with the fact that you're not losing that weight right away as you get older. As they should, though. Uh, honestly, it, it depends on your metabolism and the woman. But I do know men in general, it, I feel really bad for women who, can, who can't lose the weight as fast as they could. But um, That's just a lack of discipline. Says, it, is, it is a disciplinary thing, but it's it also genetics. Down to, you're, you're right. Like, yes, metabolic capacity does play into it. And your, your metabolic capacity does go down as you age. But that is not an excuse to be fat because, no, it isn't. Uh, it yeah, isn't. because a caloric deficit, all you have to do to lose weight is put yourself in a caloric deficit and sustain it for a prolonged period of time. The problem is this. People don't want to be held accountable for their poor decisions. They don't want to track calories. They don't want to track macros. They don't want to weigh their food out. They just want to be able to eat McDonald's and pray to God that they're going to lose weight. A man no. will lose his attraction towards his woman after the baby's born because she's too busy focused on the baby and not on herself or on, yeah, on keeping herself, which is totally understandable. But unfortunately, it's the reality of the truth. A lot of men will lose their attraction after the baby's born. And that is the failure of among start to branch itself out and start to look into Respectful other women and stuff like that. Women initiate most of the breakups. Yeah. Women do initiate most breakups, but but if somebody is unattracted with you, they're going to look in and they're but a lot of people are going to look uh, into their A man temptation. exercising options and having sex with other women is not the same as a woman exercising options. Well, well, cheating in, in her case. Well, in general, I, I'm talking about like a woman gaining weight after pregnancy as she gets older. I feel like she might lose the attraction of her man, unfortunately. And that's mm -hmm. what may get him to branch off and, and to look into other options, i.e. go to maybe strip clubs or things like yeah. that that he's not. My, my um, argument is that that's not, a, that's not a big deal. Like, like I, I've said it before on the podcast. Personally, and I, for my proof, anecdotally, I don't have evidence to back this up, so it is what it is. But one woman can never quench a man's insatiable thirst for sex. She can't because men like different shapes, sizes, colors, etc. You look at a music video, a rap music video, hip hop music, uh, 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 reggaeton. You go in a VIP in a club. They have an assortment of different women, different shapes, colors, and sizes. Guys yeah. like to try different things. It's like being in a candy store, right? So, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes or mistakes women make thinking about men is that. Hey, I can satisfy him myself sexually. You will never be able to do it. So instead of trying to satisfy him sexually, you need to satisfy him from other spiritually, needs. Spiritually, emotionally. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Well, it's a man, so I don't know about that. But being so. being his being his assistant to help him uh, operate at a at a hundred because by himself he's going to operate a hundred percent. But then you coming in allows him to operate at a hundred and five percent, and that extra five percent was gives him the edge with other competition with other men. That's when a woman becomes an indispensable asset to that man because he cannot operate at full power to beat his competition without her by his side that's how women keep men around it's not through sex one of the biggest you mistakes women think is i'm gonna be his piece you know so yeah. that's my that's my personal opinion on it i don't, don't have about that. that's anecdotal i don't have studies for that one but yeah. i think is even it, if you help the man's pockets grow nice. he might you you don't have that guarantee of him only being still because no, then he might get bitter why you're making more money but remember ladies yeah. sexual loyalty is not the same. Men and women look at loyalty very differently. Yeah, your loyalty is by not having sex with other men. Our loyalty is not providing security to another woman. Mm -hmm. That I understand. I would delete I my it. social media for him. I yeah, he there doesn't just want to make it clear. Mm -hmm. There you go. I won't. Zubi. Yeah, but he'll have a whole fake page searching everyone. Hold on, up Zubi. <laughs> Zubi, do you ever want to be married? What are your thoughts on marriage for yourself? Yeah, but guys view yeah, social media differently. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to have at least five kids too. But I'm getting married first. Same woman. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. Straight Facts. up. No. No. I'm. I'm, tra I'm a traditionalist, man. I'm not on yeah, all awesome. this new age crap. No. 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 Okay. Gosh. No. Gosh. No. 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 Um. No. I'm. I'm I'm like a combination of like, you know, modernism and tradition. You know, my family's from originally from Nigeria, from a very big family, one of five kids. My dad's one of eleven. My mom is one of six or seven. Like Damn. we're straight edge, straight down the line. Everybody gets married. Marriage, children. I love bang. it. Spread Straight those up. genes. That's, that's, that's the best I'm gonna, way to raise a family. I'm, I'm carrying children. on tradition. No cheating. No, no, none of that. Straight up. One woman. Bang. I love it. I love it. Still jam. It comes from the house. What about you? Um, I totally believe in marriage. Yeah. Okay. When, when do you want to get married by? Do you know? Um, I want to get married 
before I'm 29. Like, <laughs> definitely. All right, chat. Y'all hear that? Yeah, chat. Right now. From Maya. Zoom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. please. Um, I'm gonna had a get, few years. My mom had four kids. She started at 15. I don't recommend. Oh, and she stopped, that, she stopped that like 23 or some young fast shit. But basically, I don't want to get mine out the way because, like you said, she was able to snap back, but she did surgery and all types of other things. Yeah, like, I'll be chilling like, in my and 30s. right now, she got a dude that's banking. Listen, like, I'm going to be chilling in my 30s. I'll tell you that much. I got my boy, my girl. I'm vibing mm-hmm. all my 30s and 40s. Yeah. I'm chilling. Yeah. I love that. All right. Yeah. What about you, India? So, yeah, I definitely do believe in marriage. Um, Kind of like what you said, like, I'm in between, you know, with the modern and definitely traditional, but I definitely do believe in marriage and I want to get married. Awesome. Cool. I think I think with marriage, I mean, look, it's it's there's no question about it, whether you want to look at studies or just anecdotes or common sense, like a child growing up or children growing up in a married two parent stable mm-hmm. family stable. is the best thing for children yes. and is the best thing for indisputable yeah. yes. society and in it. general. That's not even it's not up for debate whether mm-hmm. that doesn't mean absolutely everybody has to do that or people should be forced into it or bullied mm-hmm. or shamed or whatever. No. But I think if in a society or it, look, you can look at any community where that is not the norm and there's going to be a lot of problems. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Think- Always look at the United States now. Always. Uh, the, I think, uh, yeah. Right around 50 percent of children are born out of wedlock. You know, a lot of parents, uh, kids, children nowadays come from 45. Single mother households, 45%. 45%. Okay. And then all, the other thing I was wow. going to add to this is that the sure. average age, and I just looked this up because we're doing our data for tomorrow. Yes. Show, um, Big show tomorrow. The average age of first birth in the United States is now like 26 or 27 mm-hmm. years wow. old, wow. right? Which is, Not which is uh, the reason I was looking at it is because somebody was asking, uh, I think it was on Twitter or something about like, why do you think that the fertility rate in the United States is so low right now? It's like, and so people were sort of throwing their, their numbers on. I, so I went, and I looked that up. So mm-hmm. that's number one. Number two is the average age of first marriage in the, in, in the United States. Oh, by the way, uh, average age of first birth in the UK is like 30. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. People, people, people get, ma- people get married yeah. noticeably. I've noticed in the yeah. like a lot of my late. American We're friends sure. very late. Yeah, like most exactly. a lot of my American sure. male friends like who are my age mm-hmm. have like, you know, two, three, four kids. Yeah. Right. And, then, and in England in the UK, a lot of my friends like one like a couple of my good friends yeah. have mm-hmm. like kids. So no, it's my mom had me here. at at 32 and mm-hmm. my sister at 36 mm-hmm. and she looks so young my dad's 64 mm-hmm. listen you mom know twins they your, look your mom is genetically blessed she is yeah, yeah. Our family average age is. of average age oh, of first right. marriage in the united states for men is i believe it's 29.7 for women it's like 28 so 28 29 mm-hmm. in, somewhere okay. in that range right there which like when you look at what we were just talking about the biological clock when we tell women, hey, just put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off, uh, you know, go get yours, girl, go to college, go do this, go it, like that. One of the things when Aaron Clary was on this show, the first thing he asked about very similar to this question is where on your list of priorities mm. does marriage fall? And every last one of the girls who was out on here answered, oh, you know, number four, number five, mm-hmm. number seven, whatever. I'll do when if it ever happens, you know, if the career was number one, the cl- much. if the clouds part and the you know angels sing and the light shines down, then I guess we'll I guess we'll get married. Right. And it's like there's there's no plan. There's no there. It's it's seeing it's not seeing the 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 force for the trees like there's all they're seeing is like what's what's next what's next rather than like where do i want to go and where do i want to be that's why average age of first marriage is almost 30. that's why average age of first birth is on well 26 27 somewhere around there for for men or for for, yeah. for, for women also right i just want to say this though guys marriage is a great thing however the laws yeah make it Unbearable. So, so for men, yeah. So, so for the men, incentive out here, bro, is not there. I wouldn't do it personally. But if you want no, to, do that, it, that is that's that is in no way. And this is coming from a guy who's been married for twenty five years and in a yeah. very good, uh, stable, good relationship for a lot for all of that time. I can't like people always say, well, I can't believe Rolo, is, he's against marriage. I'm not against marriage. I'm just against the way we do it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That because we it, there is no incentive for men to get married. You have more authority over your life as a man outside of marriage than you will inside. Mm-hmm. of marriage. Yeah. The, right. mom, the moment that you involve mm-hmm. the state into your into your marriage, bro, you pretty much lose. I, I want to say something real fast because I was thinking about this as you were speaking, Rolo, mm-hmm. and this isn't to pick on you. Um, But what I know, because I was talking about the biological time clock and how mm-hmm. it does indeed exists with women there's no disputing it right once a woman reaches 30 her ability to bring have children drops down so you were saying that the first births uh for women right now is 26 to 27 somewhere there yeah so 
Here's the other thing. Now, this is speculation. I don't know if there's a study that shows this, but we do know that in the United States, we have record low birth rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the average age that women are having children is 26 and we still have the lowest birth rates, mm -hmm. I would venture to argue that the biological time clock is extremely rare. <laughs> sorry, ex extremely uh, relevant. And it might be even at an earlier age than women think. We tell common society, 30 years old, man. That's like, you know, get married, get have children before 30. That seems to be like, the cutoff, but it might be even younger. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, with the birth rates being so mm -hmm. low right now, yeah. record low birth rates right now. Do you know? Do you know, you know, you know yeah. I'm sorry. I think it might be older. I think it is if you have because, enough money. If you have enough money. Well, here's hold on, hold on. But let's let's look at the data. You but just I, said the average woman right now is having her child at 26, 27, mm -hmm. right. average. However, we're having the lowest birth rates ever yes. recorded. So mm -hmm. if women are averaging 26, 27, yeah. having children and the birth rates are low, I mean, it would be a fair idea to conclude that, hey, 26, 27, even at that low of an age, they're still having trouble having children. But I'm saying can't. There's that's taking data, data well. from younger it's and speculation older. it's speculation but what i'm saying is that the birth rates are low do you see where yeah. i'm going with no, this i believe it is from the food that we're eating and everything okay you think but it's from you food have well, money it's... and you have fertility and you can actually there's go a to a doctor oh, yeah. sure. i know i have a bunch of fertility friends that weren't able to get pregnant for a while mm -hmm. but they had enough money Speak to Mike. and they were able uh, they were able to actually get pregnant in a week that's a valid point yeah the food is is not as enough money and obesity Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, be, there, I, I mean, say, obesity too from the foods we eat. This would be at a yeah, point. I was going to say, dude, there's a bunch of factors. So there's a bunch Bio of different biological, factors. economic, yeah. social. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's there's a whole ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, perhaps even even political. If you want to talk about marriage laws, etc. Mm -hmm. Right. The incentives are set up the wrong way. If you wanted to set up a society to encourage people to get married and have children at you know a youngish age then the modern Western world is doing a terrible so job. So I would, that. here's my conclusion then. Okay. I would, I, so I would say with this data, with, mm -hmm. you know, the food, the food, the obesity mm -hmm. rates, everything, mm -hmm. is it fair to say that the biological time clock might actually be sooner than women think of the 30? Yes, but yeah, the technology, coming. if you have enough I'm money, so then you can have it happen. Research. And that's fucked up to say, but it's the truth. Okay. And to, to, yeah. take away the money though. To, yeah. To, it's yeah, fucked up to say, but for it's the true. average person, for the yeah. average so, person, yeah. yeah. So also, the average person can't produce that. But if you have enough money, then yes, it can happen. We're freezing eggs? I mean, you don't have to freeze eggs. There's just take care yeah. of your, just take care the of yourself. You don't have to freeze your okay, health. The quality of life, you've got this money, is, is way better. Eggs. Yeah, the and of it's life. fucked up to say, but it's the truth. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah two, but not two. everybody lives like that. Exactly, yeah. that's why you know, I'm saying it's fucked up to say. Yeah. And I don't I don't believe that's really zoomed in on fertility. It is, but I was mm -hmm. saying sometimes it's a choice and mm -hmm. it's more of a behavioral factter as well because a lot of people on Twitter in real life, homegirls, homeboys, talk about how their parents have all these issues and people love talking shit about how their parents marriage ain't yeah. shit. So a lot of people aren't really fucking with getting married based off their parents. They assume because what they saw growing up is like destructive. They don't know anything about accounts until they get older and things like that. So it makes a lot of people have a distasteful look at marriage mm -hmm. and not want to because a lot of the parents, they look at mommy and daddy as angels and over time they see like they're human. So when, when they choose who they want to get married with or who they want to have kids with, they're a little more selective because maybe I don't want to give birth to someone who's going to be fucked up because I'm not ready to have a kid because mm -hmm. my mom and dad weren't ready. Right. So a lot of people yeah. are like That's using, a valid factor using well. mental yeah. health instead of like, you know, a lot if of I valid factors. Yeah, you got something? Go ahead. Can I piggyback off of Maya? I'm basically just going to say that a lot of people do not even get married these days. There's yeah. a lot less marriages in general these days because people have watched their parents go through mm -hmm. a lot of unhappy marriages and have mm -hmm. realized that that's mm -hmm. not something that they want for themselves. So you'll see a lot more people bring kids into this world without getting married. You're going to see a lot more, a lot less divorces technically because a lot people, a lot less people are getting married. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to notice a lot more people, uh, I guess, have uh, more conscientious relationships mm -hmm. at the end of the day, or they'll date without intention. So it's either one or the other. You're mm -hmm. not. There's a lot less people that are sitting here dating in the middle. And um, like I had my kids early. I, I'm at this point, I can honestly say I'm one of those statistics. I'm one of those people that is is probably not going to have any more kids at the end of the day. Um, and before I get married, it's going to take a long time to get me. Into yeah, you that you place. you got you had your children way below the average. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Zuby brought uh, just to piggyback on Zuby's point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I would I would say and thank you for bringing light to it. There, it's a mm -hmm. multi multifaceted issue where okay. you have economic situations, you have health situations, mm -hmm. the obesity rate, the food, the quality of food, etc. But what I'm pretty much is I'm saying is that 
the bottom line conclusion here is we have the lowest birth rates ever recorded. Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's the yeah. fact. So I would say the biological time. I, I think there's a possible argument uh, mm -hmm. that that um the the time clock, the biological time clock, might actually be sooner than women think, based off of the quality of the food, quality of the air, mm -hmm. uh, quality of lifestyle. Yeah, what yes, are of course, abortion rates women. Right now? Of course, women can. Uh, there's abortion as well, but that's another factor. Of course, women can like circumvent these issues by being healthy, eating better, etc. But let's be honest. If you take an average person, mm -hmm. right? The average person is in the United States. What seventy three percent of women are obese in the United States? Uh, 40, so, and I just looked this up this okay, morning for for John from Modern Life Dating. Um, for the obesity rates, it was by country. Japan, by the way, is lowest. like the lowest. Yeah. the course, highest is course. the United States. Yeah. in fact, it is so high they could barely fit the graph on that. Like the the bars. What's on that? The what's the final for women? Yeah, this is obesity. Okay, yeah. this is not overweight. This is people who are clinically morbidly obese. Yes. Women, forty percent of the U.S. population are clinically Damn. obese. For, wow. for men, it's about thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go and if you do it with with cl which clinically obese, mm -hmm. we're talking like 30, 40 pounds that's, overweight. That's obese, not over weight yeah. like oh you're overweight, what you're quoting is like 75 yes. yeah. Yeah. so i'm saying overweight so but you know being overweight even to, uh, to to it's still bad for because for, yeah. you when you're having a child you need to be an optimum health mm -hmm. optimal health mm -hmm. yeah. to bring that child to term so uh, they're very interesting uh, good, good. Real, 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 real quick so we had a yeah, point go ahead, in real yeah, go, quick, go ahead Zuby, no i got i got two interesting points is so we're, we've been talking about the usa you guys should also know that every yeah. single country in europe has a below replacement birth rate of fertility rates yeah. every single country in europe um which is a disaster the u.s is actually higher than most countries in and europe we're so, still below wow. so, so yeah. Europe, yeah. europe as a whole italy uk <laughs> spain germany every single and you country you guys are not as fat as us they're in trouble Population yeah so we can control. and another big thing uh you know we've talked about women but i don't know if you guys know this here's a scary statistic for you every single year in the modern western world both sperm count and testosterone levels are dropping by an That's average of one percent per year one percent per year do you That's know how point. That's, That's insane That's like scary. put that over a couple decades one percent is a lot of males. One percent. That is. In, but yeah, yeah. yeah. so From that's diet, also a factor. There's less men than women. Diet, diet xenoestrogens. Pl plastics. Yo, right. Depopulation, uh, man. A lot of stuff, man. Depopulation. Oh, yeah. that is, it's, it's, at its finest. Mm -hmm. Real quick, switch out real quick. This is a very high IQ conversation. All right, guys. Uh, Mike is working. <laughs> um, I'll figure it out. Okay. Let's bring awesome. it down. Um, we got uh, Thomas Lehrer in the house. Uh, note to the women, $100. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you, brother. A valuable, a valuable man already has his assets in check and is not worried about what you bring. He's already focused on his assets, so support him and then you. He might toss you tips, but don't expect them. I think that was a rebuttal to yeah. uh, Miss uh, Red Hair from before yeah. when she was saying, mm. I need an investor. Uh, yes. Trent, Chris, pay attention and stop licking your lips. You blokes got 10K viewers. That like meter is looking rather low, fam. Yeah, oh, well, uh, we have 4.1K like that. What? Too. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, no. please like the video. We got 12,000 live viewers right now, by the way. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, the the quality of the conversation went way up after we kicked out um Takashi, aka <laughs> stupid. Um, uh, two inches is enough. Uh, I like how she just told the mother with toddler she's delusional without telling her she's delusional. Who called me delusional? Someone and guys, put one in the chat if you can I hear don't anyone. Think did. No. no. Get, yeah, guys, give us one in the chat if you guys can hear Chris. Raji. Raji. Even if you freeze eggs, your chances of bringing a healthy baby to term diminishes exponentially as you get into your thirties and forties. I'm currently eighty k into IVF. With my wife, and we are mid 30s. Do not go down this path. Salute to the platform. Damn. Holy shit. In vitro is no joke. It's not a joke. Okay, everyone can hear Chris. They can hear the peanut butter. Ash. Hey, Alice Ash. Hey, Zuby. Can we have six kids instead? I just like even numbers. And yes, I'm shooting my shot. Okay. Zuby, can you give me your Instagram? What's your Instagram, Zuby? Zuby at Zuby Music. Go ahead and shoot your shot, baby girl. Shoot your shot. Ooga Booga, $100. What's up, Zuby? Tell Eric July Ooga Booga said hi. Okay. Who's that? Um, Eric July. He's a, a musician and a YouTuber. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. Oh Thank you so gosh. much. Uh, oh, <laughs> Simpson. Simpson. Hey, fellas. It's Juice number 32 checking in. <laughs> I am definitely fresh and fit. That blonde on the left of Rolo reminds me of a certain somebody. Don't Bella recall her Thorne. name. Oh. <laughs> no. That's what she reminds me of. Hey, Blondie. Oh, it's somebody from yesterday. You know, the, hey, Blondie. How about a date? We would have a swell time. Let me know on Twitter. <laughs> Holy. Oh, oh wow. OJ and fun. chat. That's OJ. OJ. I go, um, got you guys, right? <laughs> I don't oh, think wait. she knows what, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you, you're 26, right? Yeah, I am. I mean, she's old enough to know, but she might not know. Yeah. Wait, uh, hold on. Look up Is Nicole that the... Brown Simpson. Yeah. Real? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. Hey, chat. 
Merch. Oh, be careful. Someone made this hey, profile hey, just hey, for hey, that. Yo, uh, yep. yo, someone that came in with the FBI thing, what did they say? I know they said something stupid. Uh, <laughs> we probably <laughs> missed it, but I mean, I, I know he put it up, but um, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so Rolo, you have a question? Be good. Put, put awesome. Yeah. Good. Oh, oh, gosh, you guys are going to put me on spot And then, ladies, here. we'll turn it to you guys so you guys can grill us. You if got... not, we can have to ask her first and then come back to you. Let, let them ask a question. Our ladies, so come up with a question for the panel for the guys. They haven't, done, they haven't asked. Because yes. Rolo didn't do himself justice. Ladies, uh, it, Rolo is a very – he's written many critically acclaimed books, yep. uh, the Rational Male series, where he talks about intersexual dynamics between men and women. Mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff he talks about is based on empirical fact. And, well, actually, he abuses all the empirical fact to back all, all this stuff. You know, he talks about the uncomfortable truths between men and women. And, uh, you know, we we on the Fresh Fit Podcast uh, use a lot of his resources to make our arguments. So we got to give homage where it's due. So, yeah, you know, he's, he's an expert. And I'm a damn good this. actor, apparently. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you guys have a question for him, feel free. Uh, but, you know, no, no question is stupid uh, or no comment is stupid. Well, I take that back. A comment can be stupid. Uh, but we've been having some pretty good conversations. So yeah. anyone uh, who wants yeah. to go, we can Bro. start here and work our way. OK, go ahead. I'll ask. OK, okay. here we go. Hi, Rolo. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I have a question about accountability and okay. women. Why oh, sure. is it do you th- or why do you think women aren't taking accountability nowadays? And no, I can't say that. Accountability for what? Uh, just in general. Just in general. So when I say in general, mm-hmm. I mean account. Let's do the rating one through ten scale. Okay. This one's going to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> Fuck. Um, okay. So women are claiming that they're tens when they're mm-hmm. not tens mm-hmm. from like, well, uh, <laughs> oh my God, I get distracted. Well, we just, I mean, we just, we just talked so, about a minute ago how, how 40% of women are clinically obese. But I'm saying women who think they're tens, mm-hmm. but they bring nothing mm-hmm. to the table. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Um, so value added. Yeah. Do you think they actually have low self-esteem and they're just saying 10 or do you think that they because they've been told they should say that or do you think mm-hmm. they actually are entitled? And um, think I think primarily we haven't told like men are not incentivized to tell women the truth and women are not incentivized to tell each other the That's truth true. when it comes to that kind of stuff. Interesting. So when it, OK, so we're going to talk about physical attraction, physical arousal, whatever you, you, how yeah. you want to judge that. Um, I don't think we are nearly as judgmental as we ought to be right now. Um, and Sensitive. I don't think that there is anything wrong with being judgmental. Um, we, we call it, in fact, just calling it judgmental is like that. Even the term sounds negative. We com- it has negative connotations. Mm-hmm. If we say, if I said, uh, women, uh, men need to be more discerning with women. Um, men, as I was saying before, um, you know, women, when it comes to like the, uh, to their instinct, like the, the, uh, it, the uh, female, you know, intuition kind of thing. You know, it's when it, when women are trying to figure out a guy if he's the real deal with their feminine intuition. They're always looking for those the uh, the accurate cues. Okay. Well, the problem is is that women don't do themselves any favors amongst themselves when they are trying to discern those things. And then, second of all, men don't have any incentive to tell women the truth because they. First of all, they're, we live in a gynocentric social order, and what that means is a feminine primary social order. So men don't want to step on anyone, so they want to blow their chances. They don't want – like what was it, um, the GSS study where it was like guys between the ages of 18 and 24, 29, something like that, mm-hmm. are not getting laid. There's yes. like yeah. this in this generation, men are reporting has, the lowest levels of sexual well, activity well, I mean, than, ever, ever before. Yeah, than ever before, but, yeah. but women are not. So mm-hmm. women are still getting laid. They're just not getting laid with the majority so, of the guys yep. right now because what happens is the guys who get into that situation there's 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 guys that women want to sort of like use as boyfriend material and then there's the guys who you meet in the hot the hot guy in the foam cannon party right the guy who's like the the hot guy in the club that you want to go home with a short term sexual women have no more incentive to look everyone on this whole panel just said this a second ago is like they're priority for finding the guy to settle down have kids with get married with is very 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 low right i want to get mine before the you know the lights come on at the party well the thing is is like you're looking for the guy who is a short-term sexual while you are in the time of your life where you can maximize your potential to get that guy the guys who are trying to get with you who maybe would make a good long-term partner they're not going to tell you that you are overweight they're not going to tell you that they you know th- you know that they work at subway they're not going to give you on- the honest cues that i was just telling you they have like guys amongst ourselves we will 
compete with each other for mm -hmm. authenticity. Like we will try to say, you're you're fake. He's a phony. That's how guys disqualify each other online right now. He's a he, he doesn't he doesn't really have a a McLaren. He rented that McLaren. Right? <laughs> like I can go I can go and 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 you know point out you know call you out and whatever haters left and right. Mm. But the thing is, is that when it comes to those honest cues, guys don't have any incentive not to first of all present themselves as not who they are, and then second of all, um, they're not going to tell you that you you need to lose weight they're not going to tell you that statistically and i'm just going to say this you know this uh, as bluntly I as i can no say offense. statistically you're in a tough spot right now mm -hmm. okay statistic no and no one says this because what we try to do is we try to incentivize the beta male blue pill guys to say oh you're single mommy you're a noble superhero for getting with a, a single mommy what you're saying to that guy is that he should sort of sublimate his paternity interest like Zuby here was just saying i want one woman and i want five kids because yeah. he's interested in his own paternity he's not interested in somebody who already has those kids that are already there mm -hmm. biologically speaking you're not going to hear that anywhere else but from my I, I don't have any reason not to tell you that but other guys who would want to get with you they don't want to they don't want to tell you they that truth because they don't want to blow their chances most know? guys who try to mm -hmm. get with me will try to use the stepdaddy approach like mm -hmm. they will try and flirt with me using some sort of uh masculine i could be a father to your children a right. father figure to mm -hmm. your children kind of approach with me mm -hmm. so that's why i was like i didn't want to cut them off but i'm like yeah a lot of guys when they do try to flirt with me they'll flirt with me um using my children in not a creepy way but in mm -hmm. a way that they want to show some sort of um as a crutch. yeah mm -hmm. they, they try to use it as like hey stepdaddy game that's the you're first. probably looking for a stepdaddy which which i'm not guys i'm not looking for a stepdaddy but <laughs> <laughs> you know they'll be like you're probably looking for a stepdaddy so i'm gonna go ahead and, and uh use that approach as hey you know i would love to buy your kids something for their birthday or i would love to be around and right. and take you guys out to eat all together i will assume the parental investment responsibilities to the guy who wouldn't look at me i'm a superhero maybe and for most guys who are in sort of like the eight what we call the 80 percenters mm -hmm. guys who are like the the blue pill kind of beta guys that is a sexual strategy for them yeah. that's a, i should say that that's a reproductive strategy for and, them because they figure if they can get in there and yeah. take care of your baby daddy's kids they are going to successfully reproduce with you. And I will yeah. tell you guys, it's very creepy. Please do not do <laughs> Don't it. Do that. It's very creepy to use my kids as a way to flirt with me. Um, use that. Take that as you may. Do not get in my inbox trying to be my stepdaddy because <laughs> you will never meet my kids, at least not for, for years. I mean, but, let me let me let me let me let me put let me put, yeah. let me put, let me put a yeah. period on this. So yeah. when it comes to accountability, the reason why this format is popular, the reason why Kevin Samuels is popular yeah. right now is because no one is doing that. No one holds women accountable. And it seems outrageous that guys would actually bring a bunch of girls on yeah. here and say, you know what? There is no biological clock. You're in your epiphany phase. You're average at best, right? Um, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're a single mom. You have a, you've got a tough road to hoe right there. Um, there's to talk about like real issues like this is technically holding women accountable mm -hmm. because it makes them like publicly aware, puts them on the spot right. to be accountable for the lives that they're, they're living. Right. So we just talked about like, where does marriage fit into your sort of life plans mm -hmm. right there? Even just asking that question in some formats is like it's it's inappropriate you're not mm -hmm, supposed to talk mm -hmm. about those things well you know a lot of like and and i will say and i'll keep it 100 a lot of men do want to get babied like or at <clears> least <throat> they want a certain amount of attention at the end of the day and because i'll never be able to provide that attention to them because i do have uh kids that require most of my attention and that's all that that matters to me mm -hmm. um a lot of people do get offended by that like i was in a relationship where someone was like hey like i never really get that much of your important time you know but at the end of the day the show is helping people you're the not guys, going to i feel like this show is helping merch. guys that have been in any situation <laughs> you know like... dumped in any way it's showing them why reasons why you know it didn't end well and what is going on in the girl's mind so they don't feel as crazy like okay i did all these things right but then that's how she's feeling okay i i will say like as a, as a single mom like i or as a co-parent whatever you guys want to call it i do i i I take care of everything that needs to get taken care of while my kids are around. So while my kids are around, you will not get that much attention from me. Yeah. And that immediately turns a lot of men off because I can't sit here and and uh, really take care of what they mm -hmm. want me to take care of, whether it be their, their emotions, give them attention, any kind of. I so can, so let me a, let me ask you like, this. Do you realize that you are at a severe disadvantage in finding a guy who's like a sort of top tier guy? I definitely realize at what disadvantage I'm at. 
Um, but at the moment, that's not my main priority. I have two toddlers. That's mm -hmm. what I'm worried about. In in the future, maybe I will be looking for someone that I want to be um, a little bit more serious with at the moment. But, you know, with you're already like, like so, 90 percent of the way there because you acknowledge it and accept mm -hmm. it. So yeah, many girls like she, will not yeah. accept that. And They're like, no. I deserve a millionaire. I deserve the best of the best. I'm not settling. Fuck Listen, everybody else. I have so, two kids. If you want to be a part of my life, you're going to have to realize that you're never going to be first. So, Sonny, so, um, uh, wait, wait, hold on. Don't no, chat's warning. Do you want three kids? Do I want three kids? <laughs> Listen. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. Chat's warning. Do you want three kids? One another. Yeah. Like, you want another kid or like, two or three? I did so much to get where I'm at. You know, like, you know, I took really to, good to care of To keep things, uh, to keep things focused so we don't go off on a random tangent, because yeah. your question was strictly on female accountability. Accountability. Yeah. But guys, I mean, hell, let's just do a quick rewind. Right? <laughs> the girl here in the corner, right? What, what, what happened? She She's on a platform that's not hers, right? being loud, obnoxious, rude to the hosts, right? Uh, interrupting the guests, et cetera. You can tell just from her actions that she hasn't been held accountable a lot of the time for her poor decisions. You know what I'm saying? And here's the right. thing. The chat held her accountable, making fun of her, tattooing herself, saying you're not an employable person, blah, blah, blah. Six, nine. And she didn't like the consequences of her actions. So how did she, she start to turn, get turned off? Get mad, whatever it is, because accountability is everything. Exactly, because now she's starting to hell to get accountable by the chat a little bit. They're clowning her for de her decisions, and on top of that, I put the cherry on top. Hey, you're not going to disrespect the show and the female panel panelists on here. You got to leave, and she tried to, you know, try to save face. I don't want to leave, and all this other stuff. And then she tried to get in the bathroom, and I was like, No, you got to leave right now. Blah blah blah. And I can tell this is probably the first time that has happened to her. Right. Now, you guys want to see the biggest difference? You guys can see it on Patreon. But while Chris was recording. The guy, right? Nice guy that came that came along with, with you, your Drew. friend. Yeah, nice, nice guy. He's, he's been he was sweetheart. here. He wanted to stay, but yeah, she was like, "No, stay. I don't want to go by myself. I don't want to go by myself." But he took the responsibility to be a bigger man. But here's the thing: <laughs> you want to see the difference? Let me tell you guys the difference hey, between men and women. No pussy with her. Hold on, hold on. This is extremely telling. This is why I'm saying women are rarely held accountable for their actions. As soon as we said, "All right, man. Well, since she wants you to go, you got to go with her." He immediately gets up, Recycled. leaves. Yep. Does not even think twice. Just leaves. Walks out. This chick sits down, takes her sweet time putting the shoes on, blah, blah, blah. Let me blah, use the bathroom real quick. Oh, out the door. Let me, you know, uh, you know let, hey, he's um, out the door. here's my Instagram, blah, blah, blah. But he left immediately. Mm -hmm. Why? Let's break that respect. down. <laughs> oh, it's not respect. It's this. Well, yes, it's respect, of course. Mm -hmm. But when men deal with each other, there's this unwritten and, and but known possibility of physical violence that can lead to death. Men act appropriately because mm -hmm. we understand the real world that there's consequences to our actions. A lot of women, however, are allergic to accountability because no one's punched them in the face Just now do i advocate do I, do I advocate do i advocate that any man strike a woman no i'm not no. saying that but what i am saying is that a lot of women haven't haven't been punched in the face before which Fact. is why they act the way that they do so <laughs> thank you Maya. so uh <laughs> grow up with brothers so, Maya, so that's why you know that's I mean? why they act the way that they do the man he didn't even violate but he knew okay i ain't welcome here no more immediately leaves no no questions her. Let me take my time. Here's my Instagram, by the way, while she getting recorded. So that right there proves my point that a lot of modern day women don't take accountability because reality hasn't forced them to take accountability. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I kick girls off the show, it's the first time they've been told, shut the fuck up and get out. Mm -hmm. It's a foreign yeah. concept to them mm -hmm. because a lot of attractive women have never been told no. They're getting their ass I gotta, I shows. gotta blame the guys, though. That's true, though. <laughs> right. I gotta blame the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, a lot yeah. of guys, man, especially yeah. Miami, they're baby chicks. And, like, yeah, they facts. give them whatever they want. They don't ask questions. Yeah. And well, then, as a result, what happens is they come on the show and it's like, yo, yeah. this is disrespectful because you're talking to me this way. But, no, it's the truth. You don't want to hear it. Though. It is mm -hmm. such a foreign concept mm -hmm. to hold women accountable that when I do tell them, get off the show, or, hey, stop cutting each other, or blah, 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 misogynist. they say, you're a misogynist. Right. Or they say, how dare you? Because it's what? literally a crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a crime to tell a woman anything that is true, that is unflattering about the way she's behaving. I love no. You. So no, yo, but yo, here's the worst the part. Fuck. We're in a studio, true. right? With lights yeah. on and cameras. Yeah, yeah. That's the Imagine that. Part. We're in a studio with lights on and cameras. We're live. Imagine a guy in a house by herself with a dude. It's like that by itself is scary because you're live on, on camera. And you're acting that way? Imagine behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. That's why I said a lot of men get abused, but they don't realize that, you know, there's a lot of women that, that will never admit that they're abusing a man. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, the funny thing is, he wasn't abused at all. He wasn't abused, because that's the... my friend that came in. But he saw that. <laughs> oh, no, he saw you. She's saying in general. Yeah. 
I'm ladies, talking in general. One mic, ladies, 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 ladies. Uh, we got yeah, a super CIA. chat from the Central Intelligence Agency, aka the CIA, uh, 499. Respect to Myron. We would have waterboarded 6 9. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh shit! Yo, the chat's undefeated. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. But, uh, oh, shit. So I'll read the super chats real quick. But that's what I would say. Like, yeah. Yeah, just no real, real, t- real no, time the accountability with and, women. Yeah, it's King really Bong, respectful how he acted. Fifty yeah. bucks. I uh, gave a girl the key analogy, and she said a breadstick dipped in sauce too much is soggy. A sauce that's been dipped a lot is fire ass sauce. How do I counter? Wait, I have a girl. Wait, so, go back. Oh, so, <laughs> you're locking key analogy. I gave oh. a girl <laughs> key analogy, and she said a breadstick dipped <laughs> in sauce <laughs> too much is soggy. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, but uh, what she doesn't realize is that there's mu- a lot of bacteria that's been double Next. dipped into that sauce. Mm. Yep, that chick is uh, stupid. Nice analogy. Try to counter. DLC. Okay, I'm loving this. I'm calling it Maya and Sunny Co. Episode MVPs, gentlemen. Thank you for the high <laughs> IQ conversation. Actually, no, I'll make a quick announcement for you guys. <laughs> uh, guys, we're gonna start having a panel show with uh, some of our favorite ladies, uh, Maya, yep. Daniela. Bianca and uh, Nina Pineapple and probably Sunny who knows? and and uh, Sunny but maybe Sunny as well maybe, so you guys you guys want to give her a third kid um where we're gonna talk about <laughs> no kids no more no more we're gonna talk about contemporary issues we're gonna talk about reacting to the music industry a bunch of stuff going on so I'll uh, stay tuned for that we'll probably run the first episode next week guys uh so shout out to uh Maya and the whole squad and then maybe Sunny will be here too I don't know Sunny D uh Chris Delgado uh disgusting juice by the way fifty dollars so the lady sitting next to Fit. I would love to sit down and watch you dancing to Romeo Santos, your finest hell, gentlemen. I love Keep Romeo Santos. Illuminating the world. This show in the future will break the stigma. Okay, go ahead and shoot your shot on Instagram, man. It's it's linked below. <laughs> wait, wait. So I have one question. The girl who got booted out, uh, Pink, that was your best friend. Why didn't you go with her? Because I already knew that this was going to happen to her. <laughs> she has, like, a strong personality. Oh, man. Like, I already Yo, knew. She, she like, had that eye. <laughs> I was like, best friend, you can come, but you gotta chill. Like, yeah. So you even warned her? Yeah. Damn. And still. And she left my friend. Like, Yo, my friend's a real, gonna... true. She, she walked in with back. a lot of energy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Wait, but I'm my driver, so. I thought she said that she was the nice one in the beginning. And yeah, I right? mean, the she's nice, nice. She's just talkative. Baby. No, she she isn't the nice one. Oh, Lord. I feel I, like when you come I love my best friend, but I'm the nice one. I feel bad for the guy. Like, he wanted to chill. He was having a good time. He was my friend. Like, he drove me here. Like, not one of her. My songs too. like, but he oh, got he her back. Yeah. No, he got her back. That's Damn. my man. Like, he's not my man like that, Shit. but that's my homie. Uh-huh. Like, he drove me here because I don't have a car. He's okay. a nice guy. So he's like, okay, I'll drive with you. He doesn't know her like that, <laughs> but he has my homegirl back like that. That's a true. Yeah, I mean, it's man. Uh, His name is true. So, yeah, yeah, he should, yeah, he when Mimi I mean, told him to leave, he was like, all right. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't even think twice. He just yes. left, and, and I was like, in the back of my mind, I was like, "Bro, you leaving because of this chick? Because we're, we're dra- dragging you down, but whatever, yeah. it's fine." He was more like, "Oh, okay. yeah. he's, very, right. he's very like loving kind of person." Uh, I feel like the way she came in was like a mask. Mad. Caught up. No, she really okay, she's been hurt a lot. Out. I think she just has oh, like you don't say. Artillery. You don't say hurt in the face too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what a question next? Um, okay, next question. Oh, you, you you want oh, so shit. yeah you went. Uh, does that answer your question with uh, accountability? Yeah. Well, that was very. Mm. Uh, we gave it through Me a lot too. there. Any, anybody? I, like I think one of the one of the things when it comes to accountability and stuff like one of the things I notice whenever you kick a girl off, and I've watched a lot of these shows. So I've been yeah. on a lot of these shows where you kick girls off. Um, <laughs> is you have to establish masculine authority over your own damn show to say, look, you're not working out. We're going to push you out of here. I think one of the problems that a lot of guys have when it comes to holding women accountable is estab- giving themselves permission to establish their own authority. I've said this a, z- good point. a zillion times. Like, like one of the things that we really hammer into uh, guys these days, particularly when it comes to traditional conservative and stuff, is like, oh, men need to be more responsible. They need to man up. They need to man up. You're going to tell these guys that they need to man up over and over and over again when – from the time they were five years old, they've been told to man down. Mm. They've been told mm. they've been told to like Men hey, don't yeah, cry. yeah ex- well, they've been told they've been told to like say, well, you know, think of your mom first, think of your girlfriend first, think of your wife first, think of your, you know, like p- you know, put that, you know, be supportive, do all this other stuff. But you still got to be a man. You still got to you, you have to have your responsibility, right? Well, the problem is, is we don't we don't teach guys to establish and to assert their own masculine authority. So when you do that, mm-hmm. you, have a, you, have a, them. <laughs> you have a Chinese, you have a successful like a show. Yeah, you have yeah. a success. Mm-hmm show sure. as a result of that and you know what let me tell you something every time you stand up and say okay you're out and it's dead silent in here women are like i can't believe the guys actually do. and what are they going to call you they're going to call you a misogynist they're going to call you an asshole whatever it is because you're the one who's saying look this is where this is where i draw the line most mm-hmm. guys will never get to the point where they go um you know i'm going to draw the line and that's why I'm, actually my question for for the girls was like 
Would you, do you think that is in any way possible to, oh, you were talking about nice guys a minute mm. ago. Do you think it is in any way possible for a nice guy to turn into that alpha guy? The guy to reestablish yes. and yes, reassert and, re and grab mm -hmm. his, grab his, possible. grab his well, masculine authority. And will you respect that authority no. if he were to go and no, do? We can go uh, one by one. Let's start, start here. Go ahead. Oh What's yeah, mm -hmm, totally. I I definitely think that that's possible. Is it believable? It's mm -hmm. it it's believable, but it's shocking. It's like how could <laughs> like it's it's that how could you? I got a you. Million. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that it's literally that. It's like. How could you? You switched up on me. Like you're not the person that I once thought you were. And it and it sometimes we as women are manipulative. As well. Yeah, we can we can manipulate the situation and and pretend to be these fragile because with men, they're if we yell at a guy, we're like this. We're we're you know five three and the guy's six foot and you know we have this thing where we we're allowed to at least you know it's more acceptable for women to treat men like trash than versus a man treating a woman or responding to how the woman treats him then all of a sudden it's it's oh like you know how could you how could you treat me like that don't raise your voice at me you know when i was just responding when he was just responding to that and it's it kind of does tie into the accountability thing but i feel like yeah merch, merch. i feel like we have a shirt that says i feel like merch so that's, oh. that's why we're saying that. Yeah, I say that a lot. No, that's fine. You're helping us out. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I just feel like <laughs> just buy new. Yeah, buy the shirt, niggas. Right, cool. <laughs> exactly. Else? That's it. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely they can definitely be the same person. Yeah, okay. I think it goes back to there's no fear of consequence, you know, mm -hmm. because it's completely socially unacceptable for a man to strike a woman. So they know they can get by on that. So uh, go ahead, Maya. You were saying that um, if a guy like up his manhood, you know, while he's with you. I think that could happen, and I see it happen all the time. But I'm gonna be honest that sometimes, like a guy would listen to a meathead and think he knows everything and pump up at the wrong things, and it's like <laughs> I would not do like air out your chest, like calm down, because you're pumping at the wrong things. You should be pumping at a dude who was giving you an issue earlier, or the bitch that not tried you me. in the store, and not me. You get what I'm saying? Okay. But, like, yeah, I like when a guy pumps up. Like, I like when a guy stands up for himself, but don't stand up for yourself. Like you, you don't even really know why you're son or you're just trying to play macho guy, and it's probably only gonna last for today. You're picking up quarters when you should have been picking up dollars. You're yeah, stepping like over you dollars to like, pick up quarters. Like <laughs> yeah. I know some guy, some guy. Um, one of my exes pumped up on me because his homeboys, I guess, taught him some things, and I didn't appreciate that because it's like you just listening to your homeboys who's all fat, all the day mom, <laughs> all like just not really people to listen to. <laughs> Yo, it's funny because yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I guess mm -hmm. that's watch our podcast. I'm like, yo, I'm a frack out so my girl go home and it's like, yo, she ain't been tripping like that. You, you doing <laughs> right. too much. Yeah. So you, you got no one to apply it. But guess what? If you're a nice guy from, from, from the jump, like that takes like a lot of self-work. And honestly, mm -hmm. man, like it's hard to, to break that barrier. And and the thing, guys, you gotta you gotta know, like, you gotta know when when you have to assert that that masculine energy, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't go back. You always want to de-escalate right. things at the lowest level if you can. Which is why I gave her multiple chances. Hey, stop cutting off. Like, she interrupted you when you were simply trying to say what you wanted in a man trying to tell you. That's not enough. I'm like, yo, stop trying to influence her, you know, yeah. uh, comments. And then, uh, like, honestly, guys, her trying to put me on blast with the essay thing, I didn't care. I was That that wasn't the issue. It was that when I was trying to talk and rebut her claim, uh, I was like, well, actually, I was just accepting it and saying, hey, we talk about this all the time. She kept cutting me off. Then I was like, all right, this woman isn't really here to talk anymore. She's here to just be obnoxious uh annoying and the chat triggered her because before she even answered the question she acknowledged the chat like yeah. and i and i warned her before the show yo they're don't gonna read talk it shit, guys. Don't look at the chat i yeah. warned them <laughs> they're gonna the talk chat. shit don't take it personal i said it chris said it and yeah, she still be, couldn't before every show we get the girls fair warning so they know up front so they don't get frank castled and yes. i even told them guys please don't i had to kick girls off yesterday i don't like to do it please just don't interrupt each yeah. other and she kept doing it so i was like all right at this point the show's quality is going down she's got to go but guys you got to know when to do it you know what i'm saying if you can like get by on less, do it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, she was acting crazy. So I was like, yo, you gotta get the fuck out. Okay. You like it a little can, can a that? guy, can a guy change? You like kicking him out a little bit. Can, nice. be, can be nice mm -hmm. to be an alpha? Can yeah. he be, is it believable? Do you want it to yeah. happen? What What happens when it does happen? I think he's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> is it believable? No. But you know, like, this is a little bit separate, but I've seen 
some of your shows and when you get pissed at women, totally valid. Not saying it's not, but you would get really reactive and start calling, not calling names, but really going at her. And they, the other girl would do the same thing this time when you're just like, no, you're done. Like you're done. Just being like that, I feel like is more effective. I don't know. Just saying. Zero, I get it. Zero I get tolerance. It. Yeah. Like literally just repeating the same thing because she just was a little drunk. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, that, I guess that's a fair critique. The, the issue, though, is that. um That wasn't a critique. That was a compliment. <laughs> oh, no. But I mean, you said before, because before you were saying, well, you said, hey, it's good when you just end it or say that's it. But you were saying, hey, before you've like kind of been reactive and. Uh, really early on, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been working on my but anger. The, I'm saying I can tell because yeah. the last couple of months it's been like you come right back. And... But you have a reputation now. Oh, so, so you like you, you have a reputation of being authoritative on the show now. So it's like you, yeah. it's you, it's not January anymore, yeah, man. I have to. I think <laughs> I, I think it's important that like guys understand that like if sometimes the girls won't leave. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. First if that, yeah, they if won't. That's the, <laughs> if, if, it, if it's not you, don't do it. Like, for example, like that's not me. I'm never going to be like that type of person. So if you're, if you're no, 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 real talk. So if you're watching Myron and you're trying to be that type of person and you're not, it's going to look corny as fuck. And your girl's going to be like, yo, who is this nigga? Because this is not who you were at the beginning. So you're not, no, you're trying to be somebody as Frank Castle. I would say uh, corny, real fast. one of the fastest ways to turn a woman off is incongruency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you purport yourself yeah. to be a certain way and then she finds out through verifiable means that you're not that way, i.e., hey, you see me on South Beach driving around in a Rolls Royce. Hey, I own this thing. Yeah, I got money. Oh, yeah. What do you do about it during the day? I'm a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Then she finds out later on that you're really a sandwich artist, as Rolo says, a subway. Well, that's a huge incongruency. And then she's going to get turned off. And then also for safety reasons. Oh, uh, you know, I do I do all this. And then, boom, you you circumvented the, the hypergamous filters for Rolo would say, right? And then, bam, <laughs> she, she's going like, to come back and be like, he graped me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, guys, women take it very seriously when you're not congruent with who you are. So, if you're an asshole, be an asshole all the time. Own it, baby. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, I was going to say, and it's, also, it's easier to go from being yeah. alpha and then to like sort of like tempering that and buffering that off a little bit, yeah. like with the, like being right. a little bit more, you know, like because then women find that as sort of like ingratiating or endearing yes. for that guy because, oh, he's only like that with me. No, he's yeah, not. It makes him feel he's, special. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but so it's, it's easier to go from like alpha to like toning it down a little bit than it is to being like, a beta male guy, a nice guy, and then going, oh, I'm a tough guy right now. Mm. You know, yeah, like that like, That guy is not, believe, is not <laughs> but believable. You, okay, so there's a two-letter word, right, that you can use if you're not that on a level, and it's no. Just saying no yeah. could be you being alpha Facts. because you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and tolerate your bullshit. Mm. No. no. So You beat out 90% of guys just by saying no, yeah, guys. Just, mm. just say no. But, you know, I think something that's underlying a lot of these conversations is it comes to abundance mentality yes, yes. right yes. abundance yes. versus scarcity mentality great and point. i think that a lot great of point. power in a person but as a man especially i think is having a lot of capacity and potential and then sort of choosing to do the right thing right so i think every man should have the capacity to be the proverbial asshole right mm -hmm. he should have the capacity for it, it doesn't mean he has has to be that all the time just like I think a man should have the capacity to be dangerous, right? Like I think yes. a strong man has the capacity to be dangerous, Jordan, right? As a man, you should, yeah, real talk. Like as a man, mm -hmm. you should, like a man who doesn't even have the capacity to be dangerous, that's just a weak man, mm -hmm. right? That's just weak, right? But if you have the capacity to be, to be dangerous and then you choose not to be, you choose to use that power for good, you choose mm -hmm. to be noble, then that's like a powerful man who's also kind and respectful so like you know and and, and you see this right you see uh, like there's this uh like when you go to, i don't know you go to the gym you find like the, the biggest strongest guy often they're like the nicest, nicest people kindest mm -hmm. person because there's Hi. nothing to mm -hmm. prove you know this guy could literally like pick someone up and just like throw them down the road but they yeah. choose they choose not to right right some guys like he's all tough whatever but like he doesn't choose to do that and then the guys who are always trying to like prove something or amp up it's like you know you're doing that because you're weak you yeah. don't actually have the right, capacity. Right. And if you had the capacity, you'd probably be more chill. You know, that's, that's a right. great point. Right there. Damn, son, where'd you find Damn, this? I, I would say, yeah, I mean, that that's a fantastic point. Like, there's a reason why every world superpower has nuclear bombs, but they don't necessarily right. ever use, use them. Right. But uh, was it Theodore Roosevelt that said, speak softly, but carry a big stick? You need to be right. able to have the propensity and the, the capability of being violent mm -hmm. to correct certain issues 
but you always don't want to have to use it. Just it's just like having a gun. Yeah, you have a gun. You pray to God you never have to use it, but you have it because right. it's always better to uh, have and not need than be need safe. and not have. You may mm-hmm. never shoot that gun in your life. Right. Yeah. Uh, chats. Oh, chats. You better be King safe Bong. And sorry. Okay. Bucks. I gave a girl the key analogy, and she said, "Oh no, no, we read that one." <laughs> uh, DL Saint, I'm loving this. I'm calling it my answer. Oh, uh, read that one. one Come on, Chris, man. Uh, big ups to you guys on getting this info out there. I don't really feel sexual or romantic attraction, but this is dope to be aware of it. If I do want to find a partner in the future and not get uh, finessed, uh, keep on keeping, keeping on. on. Okay. Um, BSP, 400. Uh, what, 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 what currency is that? Is that? Yen or something? Uh, uh, 40 bucks. Really yeah, box. it's uh, okay. Modern women should or learn from their Eastern counterparts about being a woman because they're soft spoken, mild mannered, reserved, and are proud of their tradition and feminine traits. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And Hundred dollars, uh, Thomas. Thomas Slayer again. Okay, thank you very much for this question. To Rolo's right, strawberry blonde. He's Rolo speaking uh, truth. You were doing the dog ear tilt, like, huh? When he talked about <laughs> asserting masculinity, what were you thinking? And she threw <laughs> it think, again. I, I think uh, I think he came. He explained himself, so I think she uh, it came full circle. For I'm her. like a huge fan of Rolo's. Yeah. everybody um, knows this. Uh, Billy the Mars, fifty dollars. The real question is. If it's possible for a man to have that masculine authority, would you respect that authority after many years of suppressing that authority? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Nobunaga Black, to the blonde, let me know if you want to get flued out. I'll get you some Starbucks <laughs> and a pair of... Uh, this guy, I'll, get you, I'll get you some Starbucks and a pair of Ugg boots. Six-figure gang, what up? Starbucks okay. Flued out? Yeah. <laughs> flued out. So, uh, I'll put, I'll put out, out for Starbucks. So. City girl terminology. <laughs> you can blame uh, city girls and uh, baby for that. City girl that. terminology. Uh, okay. Right, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so now would, it's uh, your turn. Go ahead. Would you have that same question to you? Would you prefer a guy that's, uh, you know what I'm saying, at least a nice guy to you, and it suddenly switch. Like, you know what? I'm alpha now. Is that a turn off? Is that good for you? Can like, a guy go from oh, like zero to hero? I mean, hmm, I love alpha males. You know, as he, as long as he's respectful, like, yes, daddy, I got yeah. you. But remember, he was a and nice guy at the beginning. He yeah, he can really... be. It's okay. That's actually a turn on. Like, if he's a nice guy and it turns to alpha male, that's like a plus for us, ladies. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, we thought he was gonna be boring, but he turned out to be this daddy over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Period. I don't know. I feel like you can't switch. Okay. Like I think you can. I feel yeah. like I think you can. You can. March. I, think okay. you can. I know people who do. It's like I do too. I know it's too. scary. Ooh. All right, Miss uh, Afro Cuban. I like <laughs> um <laughs> like more feminine men. I don't know. Not meaning like wearing purses, like but you know, I like a man with emotion. You like them simps. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's cat. No, that's him. That's cat. Some people do. It can be a thing. No, for real. Because I feel like I'm more masculine. Like, yeah, in a way, like. It. So you want a man to cry, cry on your shoulders? I've cried with a man before. Are you with oh, said man now? Where's he now? Um, Crying on, 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 on the highway? Cricket. Bruh. Should we go get him? I don't know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um. I, no. Well, hold, hold on. She's twenty-one. That's the politically correct thing to say. Is hey, I like yeah, a man that can show his emotion. So. But here's um, the thing, no. ladies. I, I, I. And this is, I think, another big lie in modern day society where we tell men, hey, it's okay to be vulnerable with your girl. On this podcast, we actually say it all the time. You Don't never want to be vulnerable with your girl. Don't do it because. I love that. Look at her face. I love that. I really I do love at... that. I actually okay, like okay. that. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it. I'll bring it full circle. Ding. The, the reason why the reason why it's not acceptable for men to show vulnerability and sh- show weakness with women is because even though you guys can say on paper, I, I like it. I became a bully. OK, well, let me, yeah. I'll just I'll finish here. <laughs> the reason why it's unacceptable is because when a man shows you vulnerability, women are literally hardwired to be repulsed by weak men. Mm-hmm. If I start showing you emotion, crying and I'm like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to. I might lose my job. I don't know what's going to happen. Or, oh, my God, like this happened to me, whatever. And he's like crying on your shoulder. What he's basically done is he's told you and he's shown you, more importantly, that he is not worthy of leading you. And women are repulsed by men that cannot lead them. Now, what he's done is he's put you in an authoritative position where now you have to figure out, okay, security with me is now compromised because I'm not even sure what's going on. If you're in battle, let's say let's go into a dream world real quick. All the ladies, I want you to imagine, hypothetically, of course, that we're all in war, okay? We're out in the middle of Iraq in 2003, just... 
gunshots all over the place. Captain Fresh, sand where everywhere, are you? Right, you know, <laughs> we're all in the, in the middle of battle. Right. Mayday, mayday, Bad. right? Mayday. So, and, and hey, thank you to all everyone that serves in the U.S. military armed forces. Thank you for your service. Um, right, we're in the middle of battle. People are dying left and right. You know, stuff's going on. You see blood, all this other stuff, right? I'm the commanding officer. And I look at you as the recruit and I say, I don't know if we're going to do this, man. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. And I have a mental breakdown in front of you with gunfire going on. We got to kill Shoot you. Shoot and we got to kill you. You're, 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 He's you're, gonna take us you're going to think at that point, holy fucking shit. I got two things I can, I can either A, continue to stay with this man or die or B, I got to go find someone else that knows what the hell they're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and follow them. That's how women operate when a man shows vulnerability and a lack of security because the world is a dangerous place. It's only that we've been able to civilize it now in modern day times that women have the luxury of feeling safe at all times. Well, prior to this modern society, you get fucked up by a saber tooth tiger, a mammoth, whatever it was. So when a man shows weakness, women are hardwired from a millennia of programming to be like... Yeah, I fuck with this nigga no more. I'm gonna go deal with someone that can actually like do something because right. this guy's Survival compromising instinct. my own security. Right. Survival yeah. instinct. So, mm. so you can say on paper, I like it when a guy is emotional with me, but the reality is your pussy's mm -hmm. gonna dry up. Facts. Oh, hold on. My, what if what I'm okay? Maybe I mean to say I like an emotional man, like a man who understands me when I'm emotional. I don't know. You know, I'm still oh, young. Oh, hold on. No, no, no. Hold I'm on, still hold young. On. So you know, maybe what I mean to say is I want an emotional. Maybe. Man. This is what she's saying. Let's translate it. It's, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I need a man that if I need a shoulder to cry on, I can go to him and be vulnerable with him. But what I'm saying is that he can't necessarily be vulnerable with you because mm. men, we're designed to lead. We're designed to be stoic. We're designed to be rational and logic logical. If you cry on my shoulder, I'm not going to lose attraction for you because I know that's a part of you being a woman. However, if I break my masculinity and I cry on you, that's a problem because you're not built to deal with my masculine problems, but I am built to deal with your feminine problems of crying and being emotional and everything else like that. Because men are the rock that women look for to stabilize their life. Mm. Yeah. And here's another I, issue as well, right? Regarding that. So think about this, right? Let's say the man does open up to you on some level, right? Who's to say what's too far? Because for you, you might be like, you know what? All right. He could tell me about his problems here. I won't judge him. Unless he starts crying on your shoulder now. He's like, yo, mm. you know what? Damn. At this point, now I'm losing respect for him. And what happens is that translate into is like the whole relationship itself. So I'm yeah. just saying, like, for most men, you should not show weakness because if you show any type of weakness, it could be mm -hmm. too far. And at that point, you lose her. The girl's gonna just uh, look at you like let me jump in here and buck buck, okay. buck, the, buck the trend a little bit. I think this is getting to, to borderline sort of sociopathic levels, right? Okay. <laughs> I think I think it's too black and white. And I don't yeah. think that not all vulnerability is weakness. Yes, okay. Sure. You know, if your pair if your mom dies, if your you know, your family member dies, right? Like showing as a man showing vulnerability in a certain situation which is genuinely you know mm -hmm. painful heartbreaking mm -hmm. etc and i mean if you were to show vulnerability to any person a friend let alone you know your girl at that point and then Acceptable. she yeah it's it, in fact not doing so is psychopathic right yeah, like who does right, not right. what right. human being if you all your girlfriend's mom yeah, and yeah, say so why I, I, yeah so yeah so i it's to yeah, me it's, it's, that, it's, it's that, a, that situation yeah it's a bit more of a gray area right like i i agree I'm talking with about the, like day to day yeah. crime yeah though, day -day the general crime. like a man shouldn't yeah. just be you know what you watch a, you watch a movie and there's a sad I scene you're there on your girl your girl's shoulder like yeah she's gonna be repulsed um but yeah, there's a difference between Very vulnerability really and like true weakness. <laughs> yeah. they, it's a, it's a bit on. of a sliding scale. It was, scale. The it was all implied yeah. here. Yeah. We all... You had a point, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, you definitely said it. It's the gray area. I feel like there has to be a happy medium, especially. And, and I want to break it between, like, men versus women. Because I feel like it's a people thing. Like, mm. if you don't if you don't act on empathy for others, like I could be a woman and, and my man could be going through a really hard time. Like he, you know, something bad happened. His God forbid, somebody in his family passes away. Like that's a reason for him to be sad and, and mm -hmm. feel vulnerable. And if he doesn't get like vulnerable, it's like, you know, 
like how can I trust that you could be vulnerable be accepting to when I'm vulnerable and vice versa like I should be able to support him Mm -hmm. and he should be able to support me and it should be a normal thing that we're just open with our emotions because when we're not open with our emotions and we close that's when the lies start that's when the lies start and that's when i feel like the vulnerability the 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 strength in vulnerability becomes a weakness mm-hmm. because then we're becoming angry and we're becoming frustrated and we're holding it all in and that's when the monster comes out mm-hmm. you see say, well right I here don't... right here um I've, Maya, I, and I know... Maya and then sunny and it's sunny it okay, is... go ahead, Maya. Obviously, both of you is heavily implied, and that's why we skip past that because we already know when things like that happen, of course, you're gonna cry. So, we're not saying, Oh, hold your chest in when people die. We're just saying, like, okay, one time this guy cried to me because he felt he honestly told me he felt like he was not enough for me, like, and he was really insecure. This other oh, guy shit. cried to me mm-hmm. because he lost his stupid ass security job for $13 an hour you know, after two days. That's why it is when you I cry, feel like not I'm not done. Yeah, please, not let done. Her, please let her finish. Oh, just, oh, please let her finish. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm not okay. When guys cry like that, yeah, it does turn me off because there's a lot of things that I don't cry about. Like I suck it up and I go, doesn't make me masculine. I just will not come to my man on certain things. If I hit my nail really hard and I gotta cry, I'll probably scream in my homegirl on FaceTime and I not tell my man. Like he wouldn't even know what that feels like. He can't relate. Like yeah, but a guy and it's not about him being emotional. It's about him being expressive, the way he expresses it. Just don't cry. If there's something hurting you, you could come tell me. Maybe I'll figure it out with you. But if you start crying and doing all that, mm. I, it's going to turn me off from even trying to figure out what's going on. It's like you want to fix a car, but the car might blow up. So I'm not even going to touch that shit because it's too mm. much going on. Right. Okay. Can I jump in and say one thing here? Okay. Um, I also and think then, that, you're next. Yeah, I think that this also depends on the state of the relationship right mm-hmm. so if you're you know you've been dating someone or you're you're married to them right then the level of vulnerability is obviously going to be different i mean as a man right you're supposed to be the rock all the time like yeah. you are supposed to be stoic etc mm-hmm. but if you genuinely never ever ever show that like you end up like if you can't show that to you know your girlfriend of five years or your, your wife of 20 years like where do you who where do you we're go with we that, say right? go to your male friends for yeah, it male friends. yeah, personally. yeah I, I, I think i think to a level but i i think like i i think that's very much like dating mentality right i think if you're dating and it's just no like attention. okay this is right then even with something that is quite serious right like crying and being super emotional with someone who you're not serious with i think that's like almost always going to be a turn off but i think yeah. as the relationship progresses and deepens mm-hmm. then it becomes a lot more it becomes a lot more fluid. more fluid and and yeah and and flexible there and i think actually in a healthy marriage or a healthy relationship mm-hmm. both people should absolutely be able to confide in each other mm-hmm. and you know what your stuff is at, you know what like i'm not going to be sitting here like you know wailing like a baby but yo actually stuff is i'm i'm down right now right like stuff isn't good yeah. like i should be able to go to my girl with that and she shouldn't be like ew oh my gosh zuby's having a bad day exactly. let me break up with him Right. Like, that's insane. And if she'd even be like that, then that's absolutely the wrong woman to be with. I get right. I get I get what you're saying, Zuby. 100 percent. It's just the like, OK, when I'm with a girl for a long period of time, mm-hmm. the dating never stops. So if I change now or let, let, let's say, for example, right, mm. the beginning of the relationship, I'm a certain type of way. I don't open up at all. Mm-hmm. If you get deeper. I start opening up. It's like, OK, now it's another layer of like, OK, wait, this guy I met at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And why is he opening up to me now? Like, it's kind of like. Incongruency, uh, uh, inc- yeah, chinks in the armor yeah, that weren't it's there. It's kind of like a double edged sword because if I do open up later on, then you're just saying like I, I don't, I don't think so. Again, I think, I think that's like super like dating. I think that's dating mentality, and I think like I mean, if you, you know, I, I know you're, you know, you're not interested in say like getting married, right? So, so I guess you could have that eternally, but I think like if you're gonna have like a real serious deep relationship, then to have that all the way through, I also think it's inauthentic, right? It's inauthentic, yeah. like. We're mm-hmm. st- like, you know, we're strong dudes. We're still quite, but we're not freaking robots. Like we're not superhuman. Like people go like through you stuff, be able right? To be yourself like yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. It, it doesn't mean like Literally. there's a, like, again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a level, right? I a hundred thousand percent agree. Like, <laughs> you know, a guy shouldn't be just breaking down and cry. Like every, if no. you're, if you're, you know, as a, as a guy, probably you should be crying like once every few years <laughs> yeah right not not like every few days um, okay. um sunny you had something, yeah. something? Yeah. Um, i'm definitely in between the two of okay. you guys 
both of your expressions like i definitely think that that expressionism that you're talking about does come with time mm. i think that when it comes to initial attraction and it comes to maybe sort of a more masculine woman who wants a more masculine man so that she can feminize herself for that masculine mm. man um i think that um if you come into the relationship and you're being way more masculine, then suddenly you start to demasculate yourself. Mm. That may come off as a turnoff to a lot sure. of women mm -hmm. because it's like I initially fell for you for this uh, this masculine ability. I, for one, am I a, I'm a very independent woman, so I like someone who's a little more masculine than I mm -hmm. um, so that I can become more of that feminine right. person. Mm -hmm. However, if you come into that relationship a lot more uh, with your feminine traits intact where you're a little bit more emotional and then you become a lot more emotional, maybe it won't be such a red flag. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you make that switch off in the beginning, it might turn someone off completely. Whereas yeah. if you're, you know, you're that protector and then all of a sudden you're crying because mm -hmm. of something that mm -hmm. happened in your life that might doesn't matter what the circumstances are it might turn someone off mm. on okay. act yeah D just to jump in and throw in another factor as well right is if you add in if you add in say children right mm -hmm. so again a lot of men who grow up and they're you know it's really bad for both either a, a young a young boy or a young woman mm -hmm. to have a father who is present but who is again so stoic mm -hmm. and so unemotional and mm -hmm. so unwilling to show any emotion vulnerability etc then that also harms the relationship not just say with the the wife but also with with the children right yeah, as, presence as, as, the, the father is not necessarily just being able to see the father but yeah. it is whatever yeah, yeah. the father instills in the child yeah i mean you know yeah. i'm i'm not a dad yet but like you know wow i've got like a baby like you should be emotional Mm -hmm. with your if you can't be emotional like with your children and obviously like you know your wife or whatever is going to see that like if, like you're saying you on a certain that, level then, like yeah, everything's a, levels like you can't be dramatic about certain things, it's a level like you're but, still the rock but, but something happens to yeah. a family member or something happens dramatic in your life you should be able to express your feelings to the person that you're living with and that you love mm. because if you don't that's kind of fake and if, and if, if you're you, holding it in that's going to come out you're, you're going to have other problems man i mean the, the, the biggest killer of men under 50 is suicide right yeah, yeah. so no, true. there's something up with that yeah. i have a well, they're def oh, there definitely emotions. is mm. there definitely is. I, I have something uh i wanted to add because i was listening to all you guys very mm. intently so i so um i think there's there's a middle ground here so um i don't the thing is this yeah <laughs> like and, and I'm gonna, i don't think there's a middle ground I'm gonna, whatsoever me either i'm gonna because here's here's i see where zuby's coming from and i and i agree with fresh and i see and i agree with rollo too so when it's a casual relationship or if it's like your girlfriend even hell even your living girlfriend and you mentioned empathy now what i want to make very clear is that a woman's empathy doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to stay attracted to you and aroused by you right. so she might understand you and I might feel bad for you, and I might even feel for you, but at the cost of very probable, I'm going to lose a little bit of respect and or arousal and attraction or for you. Or you can be turned on more by that. Well, it well, sounds hot, but it's not let me hot. Just, let me just finish, please. So, Because the thing is, is that women are attracted to masculinity. So masculinity, a tenement of masculinity, is being stoic to a degree, right? And concealing your emotions from your woman, especially emotions that are make you put you in a vulnerable state or make you look feminine. So, of course, a family member dying, uh, something tragic happening that, you know, happens or once in a lifetime occurrence, understandable for her to see a weaker side of you at some point. But what I am saying is that if you can avoid it, it would probably be better because, yes, can you introduce this wild card of emotion to your girlfriend and potentially it work out and she might get turned on? It's potentially there. But why would you throw something into a mix that you don't necessarily know? will have a positive benefit you're 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 increasing your likelihood of turning your girl off because you're introducing something that and especially if you just like you said before you came into the relationship stoic now you're showing an incongruency right so i get it i i agree with you empathy she's gonna feel for you she's gonna hold your head as you crown her but there's gonna be a part of her a small part of her that she might not admit she's gonna lose a little bit of attraction for you a little bit of respect and the unfortunate reality with women is this they must respect you before they love you. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> women must respect you before they love you. Men and women love far differently. And a woman's love is contingent upon her respect for a man. Her respect for the man is contingent upon that man's ability to lead and what? Hold 
his emotions. So it all builds on each other in a perfect chain. Now, what Zubi was talking about, when there's equity in a relationship, she's going to let certain things slide. This man is the father of my children. We've been together for 10 years. He was there for me when I needed him. You know what? I'll, I'll, you know, I'll maybe sweep this one under the rug. I'll stick by him. So I do agree that if there's equity in a relationship, a woman will tolerate a certain level of it. But if you can avoid it, in my personal opinion, mm. you should avoid it. Not show vulnerability. And if you got to cry, don't do it in front of her. Do it in front of your homeboys. Like, Damn, is he really crying? That's right just now? my take on it. Yeah, that's just my <laughs> take on it because. It's a wild card that can fuck you up, is what yeah, I'm saying. There's it, it, it could work, it could turn you on, but it depends on the person. Who knows? There's it who knows? Yeah, because I see I, I, again, yeah, no, like, it's, so, it's interesting. I mean, right. I see all I, perspectives. No, yeah, yeah, no, you're no, right, I, I, right. I hear, I hear what you're saying. I think it's like, how would I, what's the best way for me to put this? I think it again, it comes as part of a of a larger as a larger package, right? So if as a guy you are like you're holding it down, right? So how would I put it? Because you, you mentioned showing vulnerability and that being sort of almost like directly and implicitly connected to losing respect. And that part, that part, I don't necessarily... The more equity you have in the relationship, and let me add, add okay, to that, because I was going to... The more equity you have in the relationship, the less respect you'll lose, if that makes sense. You've built... A, you've built okay. It's like a good credit score. You've built mm -hmm. your credit score up to 850. Mm -hmm. You miss one payment. Is, is it going to go down to... To 700? No, it's going to go down 830. to 849, mm -hmm. 830. 8, 848, you know, two points, and then you, you pay, and then it goes back up. Mm. So, but let's say your credit score was already at like a 700, mm -hmm. oh. and then, and the, you know what I'm saying, relationship is newer, and you and you miss a payment. Well, mm. now that 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 missed payment is going to go far, far, uh, it's going to go much further into hurting your credit score. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, throw, you guys, let's, throw, let's throw this to Rolo, because yeah. Rolo's, Rolo's the only, ready, Rolo's the only are, one married. Are you ready here. for me to fuck everything up here? Sure, let's I'm do gonna, it. We're going to fuck everything up. Here. Mm. Let's do okay. it. Godfather. All right, number one, men and women do not process emotion the same way. Mm -hmm. That's number one. That is a biological, neurological fact, okay? Men and women process yep. it, particularly negative emotions, way differently. Women default usually to crying and, and you know, and his, for lack of a better term, hysterics, crying. Mm -hmm. Men default to anger. Mm -hmm. That is usually where men go. Sure. That's why that's why women have a very healthy respect for male anger. In fact, that's what's called the male anger bias. So, again, I hate to go all evolutionary psychology no, 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 on you once it, again. But in our ancestral past, it made sense for women and children to presume that men were angry all the time. Because as long as they erred on the side of, oh, daddy's angry, they didn't die. OK, or that man looks like he's dangerous. He's probably angry. Stay away from him. So therefore, we have this under we have this idea that men are all are almost always angry because if they didn't, the ones who who erred on the side of safety were the ones who went on to reproduce later on. OK, so that's number one. So scientifically speaking, biologically speaking, men and women do not process emotions the same way. I've talked about this ad infinitum in my books and on, on my show and everything. The rational, else. Guys. Yes. So. Um, when we talk about processing the information that comes to us, okay, we go through instinct, we go through emotion, and then we go through reason, okay? So instinct is like if I threw something at Myron, he'd like dodge out of the way, okay? Those are the instinctual things that are part of like your starting package as a human being, okay? Which men have more of? Breathe, eat, breed, self-defense, you know, watch out for, you know, there's there's instinctual things that we know. That's like at the root level, like the hind brain, like root of the brain stem, okay? Then in the, in the cerebral cortex right then you've got the uh, you've got your emotions emotions is another way that we interpret our surroundings okay again men and women do not process emotion the same way mm -hmm. so then you've got the emotional side then you've got the rational side the reasonable side which is where all your gray matter is that's another way that's your learning that's your software so so to speak so you've got the machinery you've got the firmware and then you've got the software. The software is what we're taught by society. So you're learned, you're learning and, and intelligence and everything else. Emotion is, a, is a, a component of that as well. So we usually interpret our world through instinct, emotion, and reason. Men and women prioritize those things naturally, innately, differently. So for men, for women, it's instinct, emotion, and then reason. So they go through what what's going on, what's happening in my immediate surroundings, how do I feel about it, and then maybe they get to how, oh, okay, what can I learn from this, what's the information in this. For mm -hmm. men, it, un, unlearned, un, unconditioned, men go from instinct to reason and then emotion. 
that's the problem that you're running into when it comes mm -hmm. to to vulnerability. And I hate getting into this conversation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I always feel like I got to mess up everybody's ego. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> OK, so what happens is this is because we live in a feminine primary social order, we automatically presume that the proper way to emote the proper way for anyone all human beings male female whatever to express and understand and experience emotion is through a female lens that's why so when when people say well i don't know why he can't get in touch with his feelings i don't know why he he's he needs to um he needs to uh he's uh, emotionally emote unavailable that's yeah a, he's that's emotionally unavailable one. and so when when i don't cry during Titanic and you're just like a, just a, a, a hot mess because of something that has triggered you emotionally. Like, what? So what happens is women go, what's wrong with men? What's how come they can't emote? How come they can't cry? How can how? because he's not you. He's his hardware is not the same as your hardware. The problem is, is that the proper way, the correct way to emote in this society is to do it like a woman. And it has been that way since the sexual revolution. It's been that way since 1960s. like the mid 60s right now. So when we talk about vulnerability, okay, vulnerability, the problem with vulnerability is that women always say, well, vulnerability is we can just talk about our feelings. We can just work things out. Blah, 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 blah. That's you talking to your girlfriends. <laughs> you, you are not going to emote. You're not going to communicate with a guy the same way that you, you talk to your girlfriends. I've said, and this is my joke. Okay. It was women have boyfriends and girlfriends. If you're not fucking her, you are her girlfriend because that's <laughs> the way that could, because if you are communicating oh. to, a, if you are communicating with a woman on the same level, using the same language as women, using the same emotional qualifications with that woman, her instinct, her hindbrain is going to see you as another woman. So you're communicating to her like a woman, like what you were saying before, you know, if you start, you know, emoting and crying and everything like that. That instinctually women see that guy as communicating as a woman. He's mm. feminine. So yeah. he's not a man. He's not an alpha man. He's not a, he's not masculine. He's communicating to me as a feminine person, as a, one of my girlfriends would. Mm. So that's not an ins I'm not saying, oh, you got to fuck everything on two legs. I'm just saying that when you are communicating in such a way, women will interpret your emotionalism, your emoting as another woman, like having coffee with her and talking and doing all this, you know, like emoting and communicating and connecting like a woman would. So Friends that's number one. Number two is that the, so the vulnerability side of things is this is again, it's congruency. So if you are constantly an alpha male, there if you, you are go. constantly an asshole, if you're constantly authoritative, if you have this one dominant predominant personality and suddenly like we were just yeah. talking about this a minute ago you cannot go from nice guy to oh I'm, I'm, you know you mm. seem like a pouty boy baby right if, if suddenly you say well i'm gonna start to be an alpha male that guy is not believable and all of you guys <laughs> are gonna be said exactly the same the thing so when a guy who is an alpha male who is that's his predominant characteristic and he kind of backs it off to being like uh you know showing vulnerability that's endearing to women because they think I'm the only guy that can tame the savage beast, right? It's beauty and the beast, right? That's what turns Belle, them on. <laughs> Belle tames the beast, right? She doesn't, she doesn't fall in love with the prince. She falls in love with the beast. Yeah. She I wants to bang him. the beast, man, because he's the one who's got, he's got, you know, claws and teeth and everything. She doesn't care about the prince. She fell in love with the beast. And so when the beast suddenly kind of becomes a little bit more tame and like, like, you know, okay, well, it's like Tarzan and Jane. That's a, by, by the way, that's a classic archetypal story is that she's the only one that can tame him. Only her feminine femininity can, can, can soothe the savage beast kind of thing, but he's still the savage beast. Mm. The problem is, is you can't go from being the, the nice guy, you know, domesticated, you know, milk toast guy to suddenly becoming Tarzan again. That's not believable. So vulnerability is only endearing, is only something that women are all, get off on when they're the only ones that can drag it out of the guy who is already an alpha yeah. male to begin with. If you're all, if your predominant characteristic is being emotional, being, you know, crying on demand, yeah. being like, you know, the, this uh, communicating again, like, like, like a woman would be, which is what we teach most of our, well, most of our boys today. We raise them as it, like boys, as if they're defective girls. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is those boys become, def become def those men become defective women when they get older. And so now women go, well, I don't want to have anything to do with this guy because he's not dangerous. He's not. And, and it doesn't matter how nice much guy. vulnerability he, he shows. And that's the problem right now is that guys think that vulnerability is game. 
they think that, oh, the more I emote, the more emotional I am, the more chicks will like me. Nope. The more I'm a like, a, a like more like to a woman, like I identify with the feminine, I identify mm -hmm. as a woman, in some cases, becoming women transgender wise, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the level that it's, that's what makes me special. That's what's going to make women really like me. Nope. Right? So the more you identify with the feminine, the more there's like, they think that likes attract. No opposites yeah. attract that's and then that's simply how we've been doing the, that's the nature of the beast that's the how we're built as a machine yo that was a great point right there no, like, uh, we, and we had a lot of overlap i was listening very closely we had a lot of overlap there i think the key point with with what zuby's saying and what rollo was saying was there needs to be equity in the relationship to a degree and you have had to have proven yourself over a period of time where that vulnerability will be coming from an endearing standpoint that Rolo is saying. So we're all saying the same thing. Uh, very high IQ conversation. Yeah, somebody clip that, please. <laughs> yeah, um, clip okay. that, please. Uh, late spits, uh, $50. <laughs> Women don't want... Yeah, Tom, you can clip Tom, that. Right there, clip Tom. that, Tom. Put uh, on my yeah. channel. Put on my channel. Both of our Women don't want an emotional man. They want a man who understands emotions. There you go. E.G., you should rather... Uh, ra you, you, should ra ra you would rather tell... You rather him tell you he's upset mm -hmm. and not show you he's mm -hmm. upset. Okay, Thomas Lehrer, uh, if it's not something as serious as family death or the other situations that we mentioned, that's called a notebook moment. Moment? Uh, question mark. Women don't like that. That's a movie. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, shout out to Scholar by the way, uh, handing out uh, drinks and helping people out, man. Thank you so much. She's in the background. Hey, you want to say what's up to the people real quick on camera? Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> she's she's in the house again, guys. She's helping out in the backs in the back. Uh, with uh, passing out drinks, taking care of the ladies. <laughs> yes. Uh, she gave one too many drinks to Takashi earlier, but it's okay. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, okay, so Jake Kemp, Jake Kemp uh, agree with Zuby. Good men are capable of violence, but voluntarily control slash limited to when it's necessary. It is the same with emotions. You learn to control and express them as necessary. These two things are important steps of growing into manhood. Very true. All right. Yes. Uh, Cerilios, I've only seen my dad cry twice. Once from a hard fall and injury in the garage. And the other at his childhood friend's funeral in 2019. Mm -hmm. Men's tears carry more weight than a woman's. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, Lopa, uh, uh, Lopaka, Lopaka, 79. Lopaka 79. Okay. If your son died in your arms and you don't cry in pain, you ain't human. I hate You're a legend, Zuby. Love the everyday hard work from the Pressure Fit fam. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're caught up. Um, I, we just went on a tangent off of emotions with you. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, do you have a different, I guess, uh, idea on it now or are you just still like yes honestly okay. like that was like church thanks for <laughs> okay, okay. Um, now, what, what about you sonny you got a uh, question comment concern you know i we got zuby is a successful musician that doesn't swear god damn it yeah uh and uh we got roll tomasi now so if you want to got something for them um, uh, <laughs> no honestly i think this was a pretty insightful um circle today speak to the mic okay. yeah I, i'm sorry i think it was a pretty how many times you Come on. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I get Three comfortable. Times. I lean back. Is there not comments? Is. Reading nothing. The mic. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, I think you guys are. I think I thought this was a really good um, conversation between masculine and feminine energy. A lot of the times we do us as women, we act as if you know we want someone who is you know in touch with their feminine side. But at the end of the day, we want someone who's gonna make mm -hmm. us more in touch with our feminine side yeah. because women have become more masculine these days. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just the point. I think you guys made some really good points about, you know, how we want someone to be a lot stronger these days than than we are and, you know, not to to lower themselves in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ladies, last thoughts on the show. Question, last thoughts. Yeah, I have a question for Zobie. Um, okay, go, please. Um, I'm not super surprised that you don't curse your music. And I know it's for like universal reasons. But is there another reason why you don't curse besides universal sales or rated E for everyone? And what about you? You just don't curse because of why? It's simple. I, I don't curse because I don't curse in real life. Mm -hmm. So I don't curse in my music. Not? He's not it capping. just carries over. Mm -hmm. Just how I was raised. No one in my family curses. My parents mm -hmm. don't. My brothers don't. My sisters don't. Just how I was raised. It's not It's not like in my active vocabulary. It's just like okay. not there. And I got, for me to communicate and for me to create my art, et cetera, I don't. I don't I don't need yeah. to. It doesn't it doesn't add anything to it. Yeah. And yeah. if anything, it would it would actually, I think, detract from what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Oh. I like that. Yeah. Well, I like that's to be not able for to... me. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's fine. Like I don't have a I don't have a problem, you know, if people cuss, whatever. Right. But it's just me personally, it's not it's not how I communicate. Right. And um it's congruent to you, man. Yeah, it's yeah. congruent to me, exactly. Perfect way to well, put it. Well, to me as emotion, honesty, flavor. Mm. And not only curse all the time and curse every single time. It's just when it's needed. 
yeah. sprinkle it on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you have? Do you have something? I, I know you're you're a musician as well. Do you have something for Zuby? Oh, um, I don't cuss in my music either, but at the same time, I had to make one song where I was cussing because it was at someone who tried to rob me, but I got okay. messed up back then. At this song? <laughs> Fuck yes. the ops. This track. What's the song? Ops. Um, it's called Lil Jit. If you click the link in my bio on my Instagram at Miami Brat, you can listen to Lil Jit. It's actually like people are making TikToks to my music. Now. Yo, like that's actually kind of dope. Can you spit a bar? Oh my God. <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. No curse words. Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, let's sing. Uh, oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 fuck uh, the ops. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I never been the one for the games. Play me now. Suffer later. Wish you was the same. All the, what did I say? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, come, come on, they're watching. Come on, come on. Come on. Hold on, hold on. Oh. I gotta choose a different song. What's a good song? Okay. It'd be like that for real. No, for real. Because I, I, I always you. forget my own it's lyrics. Like scan. You was going good. You I was like, thank good. you, God. Check I don't want. If it ain't Stupid. about the money, I don't need the convo. Man's play funny games. Cristela Alonzo. Fur ankle mink pink. Rank the best Alonzo. Now I rock Italiano. Michelle Alessandro. Couldn't care if you was popping bottles at the top. Oh, with the best of the best Rockefeller at the top, though. If the energy ain't that, I kick you out the park. Whoa, Derek Jeter style. I, I'm kicking dirt to all my foul woes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Rolo. We're not gonna rob you. Um, he's a new white guy in here. Yeah, I look oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I look so like, much better in person. Like this camera makes me look crazy, but I look so much better in person. I promise. Okay. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> good thing I could take cool. a joke. I'm not Takashi. <laughs> <you know? laughs> all right, all right. So, any last thoughts on the show? Anyone else want to give last thoughts? Yeah. Fresh mask off, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's been dope. It's okay. been my, my first time, first first day in Miami, first time ever in the city. Oh wow! And this has wow. been a beautiful welcome. So well, I've appreciated welcome. it, man. It's not that yet. We got oh, more yeah. to see, brother. Okay, okay. Yeah. Rolo, okay. last thoughts on the show? Oh man, this was good. This is good. We got in some deep stuff today. That was right. it was fun too. So yep. and then tomorrow we're gonna be on. Yes. Yeah. At what time? Uh, seven thirty. Yeah. Eight. Tomorrow we're gonna be on at seven thirty or eight. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna. Damn, I'm wearing a fucking ski mask. We'll end on it. 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 We'll finish up with the ladies. Go ahead. Go ahead. Last thoughts on the show. Yeah, lots of last comments, questions, concerns. You hate us. No, I don't hate you. Oh, okay. Or you. Okay. It was great. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Follow me on Instagram at Torsha. Okay, bye. <laughs> and all the girls' links will be below, guys, to include uh Skylar as well. And attacking the story on Miami Brett. Yeah. You know, honestly, I just moved out here from Vegas. So oh, yeah. I watched you guys literally a day before you guys asked me to be on the show. So wow. I thought it was manifestation. Honestly, I appreciate everything you guys do for men and women. So you can show both sides for everybody. Because I know a lot of men go through hard breakups and they don't understand why this happened. And this show teaches them why. So Damn. I respect you guys that's, for that's it. That's respect. So yeah. does your friend Thank you. feel the same way, too? Yeah. yeah. You guys no, I don't think she does, but, you know, we <laughs> you all have to? different opinions. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. Asking, yeah, no. It's, I mean, we sorry about your friend. Opinions. I tried my best to, no, like... No, baby, I knew this was going to happen, but I invited her anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I love her. I love her death. Okay, India. <laughs> Six last thoughts on the show? Oh, yeah. I thought this was great. I wasn't sure if it was going to be foolishly ignorant. Not saying that you guys are, because obviously you're not. I have We're getting robbed after the show. Put the ski mask back on. <laughs> yeah, yep, just do it. Yep, they got me. Okay. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed these conversations. It's rare that I ever get to have like strong, opinionated, yeah. fluid, and factual conversations with men and women alike. So it was really, it was a nice release to have this. And I got a lot of information from you also. Thank you. Cool. Well, yeah, we gave you guys the truth about how yeah. men really think. Because here's the truth. Guys aren't going to tell you the truth when they're trying to get laid. Nope. They won't. So they're going to cap all day. Um, Where are we at? Uh, uh, Cardi C. No. No. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. did, did you have, did you have, yeah. Cardi C? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's you? Yo, she no. Me after this. My name is Miami Brett. I know. Ooh. I messaged you. Could I give a shout out to someone? Yeah, yeah. Go sure. On. Okay. I want to shout out to John Don J. World um in atlanta he has his own podcast but i found out about this podcast because <laughs> Overdo we, over overdose overdose red pill overdose y'all gotta yeah. check you know we know him we know yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, we know. oh yeah we know 
Shout right. out to Overdose. Shout um, out to Overdose. Me, I have fun Sunny. every time. Oh, yeah, she answered. Yeah, okay. It's cool. So, oh, yo. Yeah, she went first, yeah. So, uh, tell them about tomorrow's yeah, episode. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, guys, tomorrow. uh, guys tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's show, uh, we're going to have a, sh uh, a special show with Rolo Tomasi tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, very in-depth. We're going to talk about SA. the hysteria that rape culture is a myth, guys, and we have the data to prove it. It's not as prevalent as a lot of people like to say. It's actually far less common than you think. And we're going to come out with the data and show you guys that, hey, man, we don't live in a rape culture. It's not true. It's, it's hysteria. It's propaganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to go over the real numbers. And uh, talk about you know the real uh, what's really going on in the world when Keep, it comes to that. You got any, anything you want to add? Oh no, we're just coming correct. Yeah, yeah. that's all I can say. We're coming, we're coming with numbers. Correct. It's a very sensitive topic, guys. So we did our research. Mm -hmm. We're not going to sit here and talk a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you guys empirical fact, and you guys can come to your conclusion. But there is no rape culture. Does it occur? Is it a heinous crime? Absolutely. It but is. our it thing is, it needs to be taken extremely seriously. And mm -hmm. the people that make false allegations or use Me Too as a tool to for their own betterment. Weaponize they, they, it. they weaponize it and who loses the real victims yeah mm -hmm. so we're keep, keep women safe from themselves yeah you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so um okay Chris Hill. charles Hill, uh man i'm uh normally a ninja watcher but i had to donate tonight this panel was fired tonight and a very intellectual conversation tonight well after six nine left first time i can actually <laughs> watch without hope uh hoping somebody gets castled and i'll tell you guys this too quick round of applause to ladies on the panel quick a panel for a fantastic show. Uh, you guys were very open-minded, listened, made great points, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, other than that, guys, we'll be back here tomorrow, tomorrow night uh, for, uh, for the show, Rolo. It's going to be either at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., guys. we got to finalize the times. Uh, but we're going to do it. Me and Rolo have done our homework along with Fresh, and uh, we have a great show planned for you guys tomorrow uh, where we're going to cover it in detail. So bring your notebooks and, uh, yes, anything else? Peace. Guys, all, everyone's stuff is below. All the ladies, to include Skylar, uh, Rolo Tomasi, and Zuby. Oh, check them all out, guys! If you stay to the very end, we got Special August twenty of the twenty third, Long Beach Griffey hey. coming to the show. Hey. Hey. Down the Marco. If you don't Special know who he is. You two, look him up, man. He's huge. Yeah, yeah. You guys will know who he is. And then, the and, and then the twentieth, Young Don, the, the Sauce God. There you go, man. You go. We're gonna keep giving you guys bangers. We give entertainment. We give you guys facts. Uh, we bring some lovely ladies on. So, yeah, man, Fresh Free Podcast, number one podcast in the world right now. We're the fastest growing. So thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you so much to Zuby for being the special yeah. guest and Rolo Tomasi. Yep. Yeah. And thank you to and all ladies. the lovely ladies. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Manana. Peace.